Franklin. Here. Alderman Bledsoe. Here. Alderman Geis. Here. Alderman Bostic. Here. Alderman Johnson. Here. Alderman Dupree. Here. Alderman Young. Here. All right, we have a quorum. All right, first item on the agenda is the vote on the municipal docket. Do we have a motion? Mayor. Alderman Geis. I make a motion to approve the municipal docket. We have a motion by Alderman Geis. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Alderman Young. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Alderman Klein. Aye. Alderman Bledsoe. Aye. Alderman Geis. Aye. Alderman Bostic. Aye. Alderman Johnson. Aye. Alderman Dupree. Aye. Alderman Young. Aye. Motion carries seven in favor, none opposed. Second item on the agenda is the consent agenda. We have a new agenda. It goes items A through S. Do we have a motion? Mayor. Alderman Bostic. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda items A through S. We have a motion by Alderman Bostic. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Alderman Dupree. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Alderman Young. Alderman Dupree? Aye. Alderman Johnson? Aye. Alderman Bostic? Aye. Alderman Geis? Aye. Alderman Bledsoe? Aye. Alderman Klein? Aye. Motion carries seven in favor, none opposed. Item number three on the agenda is the claims docket. Do we have a motion? Mayor. Alderman Geis? Make a motion to approve the claims docket. General fund, $278,981.27. The library fund, $4,157.69. The economic development fund, $6,430. Utility fund, $37,694.70. For a total docket of $327,000. $327, and 200, <laughs> messing it up here, $327,263.66. We have a motion by Alderman Geist. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Alderman Bledsoe. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Alderman Klein. Aye. Alderman Bledsoe. Aye. Alderman Geis. Aye. Alderman Bostic. Aye. Alderman Johnson. Aye. Alderman Dupree. Aye. Alderman Young. Aye. Motion carries seven in favor, none opposed. All right, number four on the agenda is special guest and presentations. Before we get onto that, I just want to thank Mr. Francis J. Miller for putting the beautiful flowers out here in front of City Hall. Blue flowers, yes, sir. We, yes, sir. And, but we want to thank you for all the time and trouble you did to help beautify not only City Hall but our city. Thank you very much, sir. Also, under special guest and presentations, we have Mr. Christian from the Mayor's Youth Council, who has just been a page in Jackson, Mississippi for the last week, thanks to our representative, uh, Hester Jackson McCray. We want to thank her for that. Mr. Christian Macklin, could you come forward? Thank you, sir. No matter how big or small the, the gift or purpose may be, it's 
still my goal and my, my objective and my duty to give back to those who are less fortunate. I would like to thank each and, e and every one of you individually. I would like to most of all thank Hester Jackson McRae for the sponsorship and everything she has provided for me all last week. And I would like to thank <coughs> Artemis Artemis Johnson for everything she has given me throughout not just last week, but throughout the long-term years I have known her as my teacher, English teacher, librarian. I would like to thank Alderman Young and Alderman Dupree for the encouragement, the dedication, the hard work, and mainly you, Mr. Mayor, for the outstanding and understanding of getting to know me as an individual. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You're certainly a credit to our city. And we appreciate you representing us in Jackson, Mississippi. Is there someone else? Did, she, did he mention someone else was going to come up and speak? Well, I'd like to thank Ms. Linville for all the time she puts in with the Youth Council. Uh, she does it in spite of her very busy schedule. We want to thank you, Ms. Linville, and thank the Alderman especially those that he just mentioned. All right, at this time, I would like to, to read a proclamation for New Prospect Missionary Baptist Church, which was founded in 1875. So they're having a big birthday celebration this Sunday. Whereas New Prospect Missionary Baptist Church was founded in 1875 to serve the spiritual needs of its congregation, and whereas New Prospect Missionary Baptist Church is celebrating 151 years, and whereas New Prospect Missionary Baptist Church has been a foundation block to the citizens of the Horn Lake area, and whereas New Prospect Missionary Baptist Church provides and beautifully maintains a place of eternal rest for many of our citizens. And whereas we give honor for the abiding Christian commitment of the members and their dedicated work to assist those in need. And whereas many of the present congregation are descendants of those who first established New Prospect Missionary Baptist Church, now on the direction of their pastor, Dr. Bobby Coney, who continues to lead the church in spiritual growth and service, and whereas the Horn Lake community and its citizens have benefited from the influence of New Prospect Missionary Baptist Church, and whereas the city of Horn Lake wishes to express our esteem, our congratulations, and continue prosperity to the members of New Prospect Missionary Baptist Church. Now, therefore, I, Alan Latimer, Mayor of Horn Lake, do proclaim Sunday, February the 26th, 2023, as New Prospect Missionary Baptist Church Day. It's been a great, great building block, as it says in the proclamation, for our city. They're up there on Horn Lake Road by the Soda Road whenever you're walking. Wonderful church. All right. Number five on the agenda, this is going to be Mr. Barr's, uh, uh, really for the next five things. All right, Mr. Barr, we turn it over to you. This is a public hearing. I now declare it open. Mr. Barr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, uh, Alderman, uh, staff, citizens. Uh, yes, Chad Barr, uh, planning director on the cases before you. Uh, yeah, this particular case is... Uh, Case number 2076AI, AI stands for Alderman Initiative. And uh, just a little bit of background before we uh, roll on to this, is obviously the, uh, the Medical uh, Cannabis Act was signed into law by the governor back on um, February 22nd, so it'll be basically a year 
it'll be a year coming to the conclusion of tonight. <clears throat> and uh, the Board of Aldermen uh, opted out of all land use phases of said act back on uh, April the 16th of last year. Uh, there was a Board of Aldermen subcommittee formed to study and uh, discuss the, uh, the issue uh, more in depth. And they presented uh, some direction to planning staff on uh, October or uh, in, during October of last year. And so the PowerPoint uh, is a kind of a culmination of all, the, all those actions uh, uh, taken by the city to date. And so what's proposed is um, basically, I guess, would be the, the technical term would be to opt in of the, uh, on, the, on the land use of medical cannabis dispensaries. And so there's a, a definition that's supplied that defines that. Uh, it would be, it'd be a text amendment to the, the city zoning ordinance. It would be a definition number 84. So if that's added at that particular spot, then the other items would have to be remembered after that. And so I don't know if you want me to read the text um, or if you've seen the text that's been provided. Okay, you've seen that? What is the wishes of the board? Would y'all like Mr. Barr to read the text or would y'all? It seems to me, Mr. Barr, that they're, they're content just to let you keep going. Okay, I'll just try to summarize then. Mayor. Yes. Mayor. Mayor. All of the guys. Uh, the... I don't know, but the public might actually want to know what we're voting on here, or would be voting on. So, Mr. Barr, all of my guys made a good point. The public might want to know what we're voting on. Is to allow medical cannabis, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, as a dispensary land use, not cultivation, not uh, transportation, not research, not those aspects of the land use. Uh, of, excuse me, of that particular subject. Thank you, sir. So I'll, I'll go ahead and read then, uh, if that's okay. Um, yes, the definition proposed is number 84, it would be in the list in the zoning ordinance. Medical cannabis dispensary uh, means a entity licensed and registered with the Mississippi Department of Revenue that acquires, possesses, stores, transfers, sells, supplies, or dispenses medical cannabis equipment used for medical cannabis or related supplies and educational materials to cardholders. And then uh, what's proposed would be an Article 5 of the Zoning Ordinance under a new item, uh, letter T. We've got other things in the list, um, like it deals with solar panels, um, um, oh, other, other, other things uh, in the list, but this would be a new letter, um, just alphabetically being added. And so we have a new letter T, which would be called Medical Cannabis, a new subsection. And so then um, there's an overview here that it says here, cultivation, disposal, processing, researching, uh, testing, and transportation facilities shall be prohibited within the city, of, city limits of Horn Lake. This includes but is not limited to the AR zoning district, which is the agricultural residential zoning district. And then uh, number two, uh, where it gets into some more details of retail dispensaries. There's some, there's some specifics here. Letter A, uh, operational hours shall be from 10 a.m until 10 p.m. Mondays through Saturdays. Closure shall be applicable to on Sundays and all holidays recognized and observed by the state of Mississippi. Uh, item B, uh, and this is, this is what came from uh, the Planning Commission as far as their recommendation. Um, um, the dispensary shall be located no closer than 1,000 feet from this property line of the dispensary to the property line of a church slash religious institution, school, or daycare center. A 1,500 feet distance from property line to property line shall uh, also apply to the minimum distance from dispensary to dispensary. Uh, item C, um, shall not be allowed to promote, sell, distribute, or otherwise uh, retail and uh, additional products that do not meet the definition of medical cannabis. Uh, D, shall provide windows with unobstructed views including not having flashing lights, signage, and security bars. Uh, e, shall be insured, bonded, and provide armed security during operational or open hours. Uh, item F, uh, shall always provide interior and exterior video surveillance to all areas. Uh, bathrooms are excluded. Uh, item G, may retail both combustibles, concentrate versions, and CBD items dedicated to medical uses only. Uh, item H, the effective area 
uh, for the potential establishment of dispensaries shall be east of uh, Mississippi Route 301, north of Nail Road West, except south of Nail Road West, which is east of Highway 51 North, where then it would be uh, allowed, uh, then west of uh, Interstate 55, and then north of Goodman Road West for all properties with commercial zoning adjacent to Goodman Road West and adjacent to each other. Um, wrong. And then the last, <coughs> the last portion that would be proposed to be amended in the zoning ordinance would be Article 12, which is, which is the use chart. And since this was created under the auspices of medical cannabis uh, by the legislature and signed by the governor, uh, staff kind of took from that to treat the land use uh, in a similar sense that we would uh, tr uh, treat um, uh, drug stores and pharmacies currently. So using that type of logic, uh, what would be added then to the zoning ordinance would be the land use category of medical cannabis dispensary, which we talked about the dis uh, definition of that earlier, uh, definition 84, and then it would be permitted by right in the O, which is the office zoning district, the C1, the C3, and the C4. The only thing that would be different um, with what's proposed here and from what currently the city is doing with drug stores and pharmacies is that the city has also an OTC, which is the Old Town Center. It's kind of like a, uh, kind of like a historic overlay district. Um, and those, uh, the drug stores and pharmacies are currently permitted in that overlay zone. So, but in, as proposed here, that's not, uh, that's not the same. It would not be permitted in the OTC area. And that would be the differences there. So, so the, the Planning Commission um, took up the case on January the 30th. Uh, and they made that recommendation to the, the Board of Aldermen. Uh, originally, that came from the Alderman Subcommittee was a 1,700 feet distance of dispensary, dis dispensary, and then also dispensaries from religious institutions, uh, daycares, and schools. So the, the Planning Commission shrunk it down uh, mainly more or less, well, basically right at the state levels as laid out in the state law. Um, one other thing, I think it's the last thing, the, the, the subcommittee also uh, specified an area around Dancy Boulevard that would be basically a restricted area for the dispensaries, and that would be 1,000 feet from dispens excuse me, from Dancy Boulevard. That was another thing that was um, not recommended to be continued on through uh, via the Planning Commission review back on January the 30th. So that would uh, conclude the presentation unless you have any specific questions. Uh, very good. I want to thank Mr. Barr, the Planning Commission, and the Subcommittee of the Alderman for all your hard work on this. I know it's a difficult decision. I, I had a couple. Now, down there on Dancy Boulevard, I saw one of possible proposed motions. It would, it would restrict, it would not allow dispensaries within 1,500 feet of each other. I know on, on the motion that was from the Planning Commission, they wanted to allow them within 1,000 feet of uh, each other. Mr. Barr. Yes, um, thank you for the question. Um, yeah, the, the Planning Commission's thought on that was to set uh, the, the distance, the minimum distance, the restriction area, if you will, um, from dispensaries, if they're allowed to be permitted in, as what's proposed, the commercial zoning districts and the O office district, of at least 1,000 feet from the property line of a dispensary to the property line of um, a property that contains either a school, a daycare, or church slash religious institution. Uh, what came out of the subcommittee from the aldermen was at a 1,700 feet distance um, for that same type of relationship. All right, so it would be 1,500 feet from dispensary to dispensary and 1,000 feet from churches, institutions, daycares, and schools. But on Dancy Boulevard, at first in these notes, they wanted to make an exception and allow the dispensaries within 1,000 feet of each other. Now, if this motion does pass, will the dispensaries have to be 1,500 feet from each other on Dancy Road? Okay, I guess I would need uh, clarification on that because my understanding was that the Dancy Boulevard was going to be an additional restriction area of 1,000 feet. So basically on, on the GIS map, you would uh, build a, uh, like a polygon around uh, Dancy Road right away 
and then there was going to be another restriction area. That's the way I took it. It was going to be another restriction area on top of like schools, daycares, yeah. and churches, but only in that area of town. So in other words, on dance, the dispensaries will be permitted within a thousand feet of each other. No, that's not the way I understood. I understood. Okay, I was, I was, I was, I was having trouble. That's why I was asking for clarification. Okay. So even on Dancy Boulevard, the dispensaries would have to be 1,500 feet from each other. From property line to property line. Yes, I believe so. But yeah. all, I would, all I would recommend is whatever the, the city determines, that it, hopefully they can make it as simple as possible just for staff's um, ease of administration. I, I tell our planner one, who's, who's still in school up at their University of Memphis, I say, I ask him sometimes who is quite... Does his classmates realize that, you know, when you're in school and you get a C grade, that's fair, and you get a B grade, that's decent, that's real decent. If you get an A grade, that's really good. But really when you get into to like a public job or whatever, the work needs to be beyond even A plus. And so I would just would urge the, the, the city, whatever it comes up with, is to come up with something that would be lend itself that we could repeat without error from an administrative standpoint. Um, that would help. I would think that would help the city's cause in the long, long, uh, the long term. I think every one of us up here agree with you, and we thank you for that advice. Uh, one other question: I know when this discussion started several months ago, it was some remarks limiting the dispensaries to certain one of the C zones, and I noticed in this that it's open in all of them. Is there any reason for that? Um, very good question, Mr. Mayor. Um, basically, we just approached it as since the, the governor and the legislature signed it as medical cannabis, to basically it's, it's something to help people in whatever conditions they might need by using the product or products um, derived from, uh, um, from cannabis or whatever. So to, as, a, as a matter of decency or whatever to treat uh, those folks that need the products or whatever, uh, in an equal manner to those that have to go to the, like a pharmacy or a drugstore for whatever they might need. And so that that's kind of the, uh, the auspices or the idea of how it was constructed. So since currently the city allows in the ozone, C1, C3, and C4 drugstores and pharmacies by right was basically just to, to duplicate that. That was the thought there. Thank you, sir. And I've been terribly remiss, and I owe you an apology. Uh, every one of us in here are terribly sorry about the loss of your mother and hope that she rests in peace. Oh, well, thank you. I, I would like to thank the, the city and, and various citizens that have uh, expressed their condolence and condolences and thoughts. So it was, uh, it was a good service on Friday, and um, she lived 81. She was almost 82, and it was a good life, and she was a good mom. So I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. Does anyone on the board have any questions or comments? Alderman Geis. I think I can clear up some of that. I believe uh, the, uh, he was confused on the restricted area on Dancy. Uh, our goal was to have Dancy as a place where it was allowed. Okay, so that, that, that was a miscommunication, I think. So our, and our thought on the zones was to restrict these to the main corridors of Goodman, 51, and Interstate. Uh, not to have them further down Nail Road and those commercial areas there and things like that. So uh, we tried to keep them basically on the main roads with the exception for Dancy, which is a little industrial area cut out there. So are you saying that dispensaries would be allowed within a 1,000 feet of each other on I'll Dancy be, uh, or go back to the 1,500 like everywhere else? The, it, it, the, uh, the recommendation uh, of Alderman Young was 1,700, and that's what was presented to the director. Uh, we, we knew there might be discussion and debate on that distance, but the, uh, the idea was, the main idea is to keep them from us having a whole Goodman Road and 51 full of marijuana dispensaries, like casinos in Las Vegas on the Strip. You know, we, we don't want that. so. Our bigger concern was the 1,700 distance between each facility, uh, not having one or two on every block. Um, the, in my opinion, the distances on the, the churches and the schools, you know, we can discuss that, but the 1,700 between them, 
uh, is something that the uh, committee wanted to keep because we wanted to limit the number of them while still giving the option for a few of them for people that need that to be able to come to Horn Lake and purchase it. Oh, that's good. I, I appreciate the, the committee doing that. But I, I still don't understand about the way in here on dancing. Will they still be 1,700 or 1,500 feet across, apart 17, or 1,000? 1,700. All right. Thank you, sir. So, so technically, if one was on Goodman, but it's 1,700, within that 1,700 distance on Dancy, it wouldn't fit. So it's going to pretty much come to first come, first serve, who gets, you know, a location. When the first one comes in, then it's 1,700 from that. So, you know, hopefully one could be in Dancy. Um, you know, and I think there's probably more open area in there compared to Goodman. But th Thank that you. was the thought. Thank you, sir. Alderman Bostic. First off, I would like to thank the subcommittee for all the hard work that they did in, in putting this all together. I know this has been a long process uh, of making sure that we get it done right the first time. But my question is uh, for Billy, since this is going to be a brand new uh, addition to retail in the city, at this juncture, can we prohibit the amount of how many are going to open up within the city of Emmons, if we want to set it at, at four or five and stop at that, can we do that on the front end? Well, I, I don't know that the legislature allowed you to do that in the act. Uh, I think that's the purpose for coming up with the distance requirements and, and zones. You, you can regulate, regulate them that way, um, and that should keep your numbers down. Uh, yeah, I, I was just curious. I just want to make sure that we don't get oversaturated like, like – Alderman Geist was talking about, and I know the committee was working on that and the 1,700 feet, but it seems like I just didn't want to, 10 months from now, have 15 of these in the city. And I, you know, that's the why I, was, I didn't know if we could stop that now without later. So, I, it's, it's possible. Mr. Barr may have looked at that um, with, with the 1,700 foot requirement how, about how many that would even allow within the city within the proposed zones. Well, obviously, at, at going with uh, the 1,700 feet uh, size, if you will, restriction areas as opposed to, let's say, 1,000 feet or 1,500, it does limit um, the available areas that have commercial zoning within that band, that east-west band from, you know, Mississippi Route 301 to, um, to the interstate and between kind of Goodman and Nail. It does, it does limit that from a geography standpoint. Um, obviously, anytime you would e expand restriction areas, that they have to be so far from each other, it, it's going to cut down on the eligible properties um, that, that can have the use. Um, we didn't do ac an exact count of what that could be from a maximum or s sort of standpoint. We did not do that. Um, but to me, I'm, I'm, if, if, if Dancy Boulevard was to allow um, the dispensaries, but then we have restriction areas, obviously what we've done, what, uh, what the planner has done here is – as you can see on the, on the map there, the, the properties uh, highlighted either with uh, like the orange or the yellow or the red, those are either like school, daycare, church, and then the commercial properties, what we did is we lumped all of the, the O, the office zone, C1, th C3, and C4, and we just colored them pink um, so they kind of stand out on the map. Um, so when you get into that Dancy Boulevard area, you see a lot of other uses with the restriction zones that overlap that. And so I don't know how that's going to have. I don't know how that's going to be basically over over refuted or overdone because that's are actually um, I mean the state limits are like a fifteen hundred feet and a thousand feet, and if the the city would do seventeen hundred, it, it just gets very confusing from a staff perspective because um, I would think those other restriction areas would actually overweigh the area around Dancy Boulevard to allow it. Um, so it gets very confusing. Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. Billy, Mr. Barr, it looks to me like most of Dancy is M1 anyway on the zoning map. Yeah, they're, they're <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yeah, most of, uh, I think on, I'm trying to think of the west edge or whatever of Dancy, if, if it's M1 or what. But there, I think there is some commercial in the area, um, especially if a person goes out 1,000 feet or more. 
So um, I don't, we'd almost have to come up with another, let's say like a detailed map of that part of town and then still try to impose the restriction areas and then see what we have. I don't know if that's of any interest um, to the board or not. Alderman Young. Does include security bars. It does not include security bars. Security bars need to be visible in the front window. That's yours. And that does not. It does. So it, it, I can have security bars. Your item D. Well, that would contradict with the CS. That would contradict with the normal design standards of the city, which which don't allow that. This is not normal. And let me say point of fact. Okay. We want security bars in the front window, along with cameras. It, it's pretty spelled out. We don't change those things in the planning department. We don't legislate. How many does the planning board think need to go in the city of Warren Lake? Did y'all even consider that or have that conversation or was it even a discussion? Well, I don't think they articulated a particular number. That's the problem. Okay. Has anybody on that board, planning board, read the 428-page law from the state of Mississippi that you're quoting? That I do not know. I've read it three times. What we need to understand is that the planning commission does not legislate. They can recommend zoning. That's all you get to do. Now, who added all these extra zones? Because when Mr. Dice and Mr. Metro and myself met, we talked in your office about C4. Where did all these other zones come from? Well, I guess I must have misunderstood that. I just... Yeah. Mr. Fletcher, maybe five, okay? We don't need a 10 or 15 of these things stretched out across the city. And we need to make sure that they understand completely and totally there will be no growth, no distribution, and no uh, facilitation or product testing in the city of Warren Lake. And that includes AR, not limited to. That includes nobody in the city of Warren Lake will be allowed to do that. Zero. So we please need to make those corrections as we mirror it. And 1,700 square feet in my world Dancy Boulevard that Mr. Geist brought up, I don't have a problem adjusting that, but what we need to understand about the state legislature is they, is they can come up and say whatever kind of number they want. And this body right here, we can change that as long as we go up. We can make it 2,800 square feet. They're not going to argue with us. Where they're going to argue with us is when we do 700 square feet or 1,200 square feet. We can't legislate the state legislature. Just as planning cannot legislate this body here. So the 1700 is what this body brought forward, is what the committee brought forward, and that's what we really need to look at. I, I'm just really concerned at, at the adjustment and what we what we recommended. That that really that that, that really puts the burden in my head about which way we're going here. Uh, any question? Any answers to any of this? Why why it was changed? Well, some of it may have been miscommunication, but remember that the the. Um, staff's uh, job is, you know, once something is handled by the planning commission, if they make a recommendation, is to bring the recommendation to this body. On zoning. Not on regulations, not on law that we're looking at in the city. Well, I guess from my, my reading of the, the Mississippi Code and then the zoning ordinance itself, I would disagree with that. So planning is on the legislative side of the, of the, of the, of the board. Well, they don't have the final say. The board has the final say, but they do. They are a recommending body. Mm, for zoning, you're right. But there are some changes that need to be made. But I, I know it seems like I'm, I'm, I'm really jumping here, but it, it really upsets me that three people sat with the direction of the mayor for months, literally months, and sat down and adjusted this and talked about this. And we went back and forth several times have changes done to what we presented to this board with the vote on. That's not the way business is conducted here. You know that. Uh, 
Alderman Bostic. I had another quick question. Is there any regulation for the size, square footage of the business and the amount of inventory they can keep in that? Because I won't want somebody opening up one in a huge location and has just an enormous amount of inventory as opposed, what is the square footage minimum and maximum of what the facility can run this operation out of or is there one? There's nothing proposed as far as like a like a maximum square footage. Alderman okay. guys. Um, on that, uh, I would think that any once if this ordinance is if we opt in and we adjust our we adjust our uh, ordinances to cover uh, me medical marijuana dispensaries, then any proposed business would have to go through the planning process where they present plans, all of that, and then uh, that goes through that process to approve the building, the size, how it's designed, and all that. I just know there's a lot of empty bays out here in the city, more than I can count and more than we could all count, and some of those bays are about as big as our executive session back there in the back, and then some of those bays are can be as, bi be as big as this courtroom. So I just wanted to make sure that all these you know places that have built a retail convenience store and they've got two bays next to it, is that every one of them in town that's in a C4 is going to have one of these? So I just want to regulate it on the front end. I want to make sure that we do it all correct to begin with. I know that's needed. I know we need to do this. But like Alderman Young said, y'all worked hard on this, and we've got to make sure that we get it right the first time. If we don't get it right the first time, then we're, we're going to be battling this for the next Lord knows how long. Alderman Bledsoe. Uh, one thing, uh, this is just for the planning department. Uh, when they come in and put in their application and stuff, y'all might need to keep up with what who's number one, who's number two, because it might come down, like they said, who's first gets in who, and who's second don't, because if they're too close. So they got to keep up a record of that to make sure that number two don't get ahead of number one. Some good ideas. Chad, you get, you get what I said? Yeah. Okay. I, I have a question, Mr. Barr, about letter H over on there talking about the effective area for the potential establishment of these dispensaries. And then it says, north of Goodman Road West, and for all properties with commercial zoning, adjacent to Goodman Road West and adjacent to each other. So in other words, on the north side of Goodman, they would have to be have frontage on Goodman Road. They couldn't go back any. Am I reading that right? Is that the intent? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. I believe that was the intent that um, as far as the southern boundary, it was basically going to be north of uh, Nail Road. But as far as the northern boundary, it would be north of Goodman Road. But basically those properties with commercial zoning and they would basically be adjacent to, uh, to Goodman Road. And I actually wouldn't mind actually some clarification there if because we do have some instances in the city where there's there's commercial zoning on the north side of Goodman that they're stacked. Um, so if you just want it along frontage, along Goodman Road, or for properties that don't have frontage, but they actually have commercial zoning, but they're adjacent to a property with commercial zoning that does front Goodman Road. Well, thank you. I noticed in your packet here, you said you stated the need for clarification on several items. So if I'm understanding you right, they got to face Goodman Road. They can't be stacked behind it. Whatever, whatever the board desires on that, whatever yes, sir. feels in the, the best interest. Right. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Alderman Young. That would take. That would also be the the, the snap on that on Nail Road and 51 and any other. They have to be. And the reason that we thought about that is because the police that way, they don't have to go down and behind and circle around. They can drive by this place and look. See what's going on. Not saying there's going to be anything wrong going on, but if they get an alarm or something like that, they don't have to go around behind the building to see what's going on. It's just to protect our police officers. Yes, sir. It's, it's a lot better for the business, too. 
with good visibility. I like that they can't put anything in the window. Does anybody else have any questions from the board? Alderman Geis. Uh, could you show the uh, two maps, uh, the one for 1700 and then eight, and then the, what the state proposed uh, and point out the areas where they would be lawful to have one of these? Oh yeah, this, this first map that's, uh, that you're looking at, this is the one that's proposed with the restriction area, it's set at 1,700 feet. Uh, and this restriction area is there are those kind of hatched uh, markings in red. And then the whether it's a school, religious uh, institution type property, daycare or church has one of those three colors. And then you see the commercial zoning uh, below that in the pink. And so you can see some areas, uh, actually I think like, uh, uh, let's see, it'd be east of City Hall here on the other side of Tulane. Um, I think there might be some there that's available, uh, perhaps on the Bullfrog Corner area, uh, particularly maybe the, the northeast corner of that intersection. Uh, and none on Interstate Boulevard or Nail Road Extended? Looks like it's all covered up. Yeah, it, do, it does look like it's all covered with the restriction areas. And the 55, I mean, uh, Goodman Road and... Uh, Interstate, nothing there. Yeah, there, there's some commercial zoning, but it's not it's not adjacent to Goodman Road. So you can see it there, just on the very west of uh, I-55. Yeah. It's outside of a restriction area, but it's not adjacent uh, to Goodman Road. That's one of the thing that we could have added was that that basically that swath. Think of it as just a swath going from east and west across town, where this where these could be eligible, um, but we just didn't add that to the map. Um, we could do that at a later date if, if that was the, the desire of the board for clarity. And we probably will, you know, if, if it gets an adopted or whatever, in a similar vein where we have in the zoning ordinance, we have sign overlay districts. We have a special one for around the Bullfrog Corner area. We have the one over by between Interstate Boulevard and I-55. Uh, I'm envisioning that we'll have also, from an administrative standpoint, another map that will show this this area. Um, we toyed with the idea whether to bring it up to the level of make it a, a, like an official zoning map, but we know that over time that, um, you know, there could be commercial zoning uh, changes in town, which will also change that uh, perspective of the map. So we're just going to leave it more in the, in the idea where it just helps us administratively tell um, where these, where this area would be. So in a way it's kind of like a, like an overlay area, but not going to quite that effect. Oh, so if I'm reading this map right, with the restrictions we have, they have to be on Goodman or 51 or interstate facing the road. They can't be to the side. We just have one section at Bullfrog Corner. It looks like on the east side and a little bit south of Goodman. Is that what I'm seeing there? Uh, that, that's correct. Looks like there's some there that it's outside of the, the, the 1,700 feet restriction area. And then you go down to where City Hall is, so you got a, a section right there. Is that correct? Yes, it looks like it's on, like on the east side of Tulane. And that is, if I'm reading this right, that's the only two places in the city you could have them. You know, I, I, I can't. A little bit past Skate Odyssey, there's a section? Yeah. Okay. Um, in, in, so three. And that's, that's if the property's available. Yeah, if the property's available. Can I uh, see the other one that has the state distances? So. This, this map doesn't have the commercial zoning on it. That was an added, that, okay. was, that was added on the, on the 1700 feet. So we apologize so it, for that. So that's giving you a little space toward the interstate, one set, little small section on Interstate Boulevard, a uh, little bit bigger area at Goodman and 51, a little bit bigger area at City Hall, and then a, something it looks like, is that Horn Lake Road and Goodman down by Kroger and Walmart in that area? Yes, it does appear so. And then you have a, 
a bigger stretch down by Skate Odyssey, down through there where there's nothing been developed at the moment. Churches. And just, you know, they've got the churches there. Yeah, there's some, there's some commercial zoning on the north side of uh, Goodman Road there. And I, I'm, I'm curious about one thing at, at Interstate and in Goodman, what is it in that area that's causing that restricted area? Is there a church, a storefront church somewhere in there? Is it at the Har old Harley Davidson place? Yeah, I, I don't recall offhand what the specific um, uh, proprietor or church or whatever it is, you know, off off the cuff or whatever, without looking it up. But what we did is we tried to pull pull the map together from those. I mean, obviously, I don't think the the churches get business licenses from the city, but obviously yeah. the daycares, and we we just tried to identify the schools as best as we could. To make sure we've got proper coverage there and representation. I was just curious what was. Alderman Klein wanted to answer that for y'all. I'm on the storefront. I read the map that there's what three churches that are in the I wasn't aware of a church on Interstate Boulevard. Uh, it's the old Harley building. Is there one still operating in that? Mm -hmm. As far as I know. The Dream Center. Yep. Uh, the uh, the uh, Gateway School. And then the Career Tech. Mayor. I was just curious about that. Mr. Geis. Alderman. Mr. Geis. Yes, sir. On the 1700 on Hurt Road, there's actually five different locations on Hurt Road that's available on a 1700 foot plant. So um, you got that. Then you've got the corner of Highway 51 and Goodman on both sides and the northeast and the southeast section. You've also got some availability on the northwest section. You got some availability in the strip malls across the street here. And then of course you got Goodman Road like you pointed out down there where there's nothing being done yet. So there's uh, there's ample, ample locations. There again, we don't want 15 or 20 of these things. There's definitely not. If, if, look at the map you got up there. It said medical marijuana restricted areas at 1,000 feet. That's actually less than what the state provides for, isn't it? They got to be even by the state 1500 dispensaries from each other. Yeah, we can't go. My understanding is we can't make it less restricted than what the state provides for. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mr. Mayor, I think that map is not dispensary to dis dispensary. It's well, correct. There's no dispensaries in town, so there's no. nothing to write 1500 feet from. Yeah. Right. It's 1,000 from churches and schools and stuff. Yeah, 1,500 from another dispensary. Well, no matter what we do, I, I think it needs to be 1,700 between dispensaries. Yeah, that's, Mayor. Alderman Young. That's the reason that the committee landed on 1,700 square feet mm -hmm. to stop this confusion that the board is seeing right now and everybody else in the city is going to see. If we just pick a number, 1,700 square feet, no buying out, no requesting, no letters to do it. It's going to be real easy for us to figure out where they're supposed to be and where they're not supposed to be. It's not going to be any of this confusion that we're seeing right now. Where is this and what's this? And is this one a thousand fair? Is this in 1500? What is 1700 square feet? Just do it. You just might 1700 feet even from a school. Is that correct? If the rest of the committee, 17 from school. even from a school. A church? Y'all had, did y'all have 1,700 in this period? And that was what was presented from the, okay. from the committee. So it was 1,700 on all of it, all of it. See, this has been a good process. You've had the committee submit their recommendations to the planning commission. Mm -hmm. They've kind of, you know, played with them a little bit. And now they're presenting all, you're getting all the facts tonight 
for the recommendation from the committee, from the Planning Commission, to give you plenty of information mm -hmm. to make a good, solid decision. And I want to commend you for, like Oliver Bostic saying, this is a one-shot deal. If no one else has any comments from the board, it's open to the public. Alderman Dupree. I'm the only lone wolf in this pack here. <laughs> so I want to get this out. The police department is going to have havoc on this. It's going to win. We're already now. People are going to get these metal mar marijuana cards, a dime a dozen. It's coming. They can't take care of, of everything that's coming. Everybody on the corner is going to be smoking marijuana. Is there something, a regulation, you can only do it in your house? There is? Okay. Is everybody going to do that? Absolutely not. Statistically speaking, Cities who have passed ordinances, even with mar medical marijuana, accidents, the study shows car accidents have gone up 18% in every city or above more than 18%. So we got to look at the repercussions of what this is going to do. If somebody really needs the marijuana medically, why do they have to smoke it? gentleman comes standing right before us last year with a little girl and she's on the oils he says the oil's great it worked I have no problem with that somebody really wants the mar medical marijuana for their illness they're not going to care how they get it in what form When that man stood right there, I, I shed a tear for his daughter. It, it really bothered me. And, I, and that's the point. I said, yes, we need it. But how do we need it? Do we need every Joe Blow that smokes marijuana? Oh, guess what? I'm going to go get a mar medical marijuana car, and I can smoke it. It's coming. Look at the – I did the stats on it. 18% or more accidents calls we're going to have calls at the yin yang of people hey they're smoking marijuana under the carport or you know they're smoking it down here at the store just like i smelled earlier or down here at the gas station we don't have enough coverage now i'm hoping that we can get some officers i'm begging major <laughs> so that's my two cents of it. I think people need it. If they really need it, they don't care where it comes from. If it's an oil or a liquid form, then that's fine. But when it's going to imp impose a problem on the, on the innocent citizens out here, I do have a problem with it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alderman. And I'll ask Chief Rao, <clears throat> excuse me, about... If you had a medical marijuana card, where you could smoke it, he said you cannot legally be walking down the street smoking it. That doesn't give you permission to do that. You cannot legally smoke it and be driving your automobile. But just like Alderman Dupree said, there's going to be people that do, and it's not going to be hard to get a medical marijuana card. It's not hard to get fake IDs for anything anymore. All right. Anybody else on the board have any questions? Alderman Klein. So I do understand y'all uh, presenting that tonight. Uh, but we're only talking 200 feet difference, 1,700 versus 1,500. So, so uh, with that, uh, I say we're ready to move on. Alderman Geis. I, I wanted to add one more thing to the 
ordinance that we had on the security of the buildings. Uh, you, you did add in there the video and all that and armed security. There also needs to be uh, monitored alarms on those buildings as a requirement. But, uh, that no one else on the board has any Alderman Bledsoe. Uh, the only thing, I don't know. I'm for medical marijuana, not marijuana. Okay. Liquid, that's fine. Okay, we, we do it here in Hornet State Liquid. Okay. They go to South Haven, get it, bring it down here. Thought it's going to happen. And right now it's illegal, and you got people on the street smoking it, and it's hard to catch them. But, uh, you know, we're for medical marijuana. I don't want to, after seeing that young man talk about his kid, and it'd break my heart. Uh, I, I'm just for some relief for people that are really needing it. And I'm not going to punish them because you got some yahoos out here that's going to uh, use the law in their favor or, or just hide it. But uh, what's it I hate to say? I am for the medical marijuana, but uh, I'm not for marijuana. <laughs> Thank you, sir. If there's no more discussion from the board at this time, would you object to me opening it up to the public? Let them have any. Does anyone out in the audience have any remarks? Yay or nay? Oh, let Mr. Miller come first. And again, thank you for doing the landscaping in front of City Hall. I hope those are all pansies. I hope it's not anything. All right. Yeah, but not any marijuana, believe me. They're, LS, they're LSU colors. I don't understand that. <laughs> I never have thought pansies started with a D. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Time's up, Mr. Francis. <laughs> I knew you would pull that. Okay, briefly, and I'm real serious. Okay, my name is Francis J. Beller, voting resident of Horn Lake, 14 years, resident of DeSoto County, 35 years. I really believe, and I want to go on record, we need medical marijuana for the people that need it. And yes, it's going to open up a nightmare. We have to control that nightmare. And I agree with Alderman Dupree. It's going to be a nightmare. But the need is greater than the nightmare. So we got to handle the nightmare. Then when it comes to Alderman Young, I agree with him 100 percent, 1,700 feet to do everything you can to cut that number down. I, and I hate to have to agree with you, but anyway, <laughs> 1,700 feet. And Bosick, yes, this can be a nightmare if you don't get it right on the front end. But we need medical marijuana and control the problems. And we have a good enough police department, I think, that can handle that when it gets out of control. Thank you, Mr. Francis. Sir, th this is a three-minute time limit on these remarks, sir. Yes, sir. We need your name and address for the minutes, please, sir. My name is Andrew Scandroli, and I'm here to talk about 1565 Dancy Boulevard. All right. So, uh, and where do you live? I live in Memphis. Well, give them your address. We have to have it for the uh, minutes, it please. It is 6701 Aberfoyle Cove. Uh, so, you, yeah, you can kind of already see where this is going to go. Um, being that we have a, a property on Dancy Boulevard, uh, you know, I'm just kind of here to request maybe uh, consideration for that uh, to be used for that purpose. Uh, seeing as how it's kind of an industrial street, it seems like, you know, you're not going to have, you know, school children coming over there or anything like that. It's, you know, it's an industrial area. Uh, and so I just wanted to kind of express, uh, you know, our desire to to operate there and uh, you know going back to the whole you know nightmare scenario thing uh, if you have people that are opening the businesses and, and want to do right and are willing to work with the police uh, you know I think that can help minimize some of the, the scary potential that is out there so. anybody have a question Alderman Bostic do you have one of these businesses already in operation in Memphis now, or would this be your first, or are you leasing it to somebody to do it? So currently in Memphis, uh, we own a hemp and CBD business that is starting up, but this will be our first medical uh, 
uh, operation yet. Anyone else? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience? Yes, ma'am. Please remember when you come forward, ma'am, give your name and address in three minutes. Hi, I'm Kirby Carter. Um, my address is 6465 Cornwall Road here in Horn Lake. Um, I'm calling, oh, well, I'm not calling, I'm here, I'm sorry. Just relax. <laughs> Quick question, the Dancy Boulevard thing, I know you talk about the daycares and the schools. There's a pediatric therapy service center right there at 1751 Dancy Boulevard. So does that take into any consideration with the Dancy Boulevard? Would there be in, you know, kids there all day long, eight to six? Well, I, I would believe that state law would kick in there, wouldn't you, Mr. Billy? Mayor, we'll check on it. I, I believe the acts as daycare center. So if, if it's something other than a daycare center, it probably wouldn't have any application here. Just curious since children will be there all day long, you know, from ages birth to, well, till they're 18, since they're considered, you know, pediatric till then. But it's called Pediatric Therapy Services. It's owned by Miss Karen, um, I just drew a blank, uh, Karen Cisco. she owns it. And it's right there, just right down from the Charo. So just very curious about that. What, what therapy does it provide? Physical, occupational, and special, um, speech therapy for, any children with special needs or children who don't have special needs? Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anyway, don't, don't run off. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? Ms. Ms. Carter? Is that I do. Is this the only one of those in the city that you know of? In Horn Lake, yes. It is the only one in Horn Lake. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Alderman Bledsoe. Are they... Uh, when they're there in the building, are they supervised by people? Is it like a doctor's office? You go and you wait your turn and then you go in, or how does it work? Yeah, so you go in, parents wait. I, I know because my, my son used to receive therapy services there. Um, you go in, you wait. The parents sometimes wait. Sometimes they leave while they're being treated by the therapist. But the therapists do take them outside. If it's sun shining, you know, it's pretty outside, they'll go and do some of the therapy outside. They're not always inside. So that's why that was my question. All right. Is it, you got the front door or back door? Or oh. You go out front and in and out? And well, they go out the back door. I'm sorry. Okay. That's the, what the, yeah. Everyone else just only goes through the front okay. there. That's but they're the supervised. Place. They're kept in that area, right? Yeah. All, right there on that property. Yes, sir. Alderman Guys, uh, Is this located on the side where it's backing up uh, toward the school? If you turn down Dancy and this is, is El Charo, the they're on the right side. On the right side, it's okay. The next one down below it is the tattoo. Okay. My next question would be for the gentleman that was just here, where is your building located? Okay, so on the other end, down toward the old barbecue place, down that way, around the corner and out of sight. That would I would think so. If it's the dogs' day, yes, yeah, by the place that used to make trailers and all that. Okay, thank you. Anyone else, Mr. Mayor? I, I I quickly in response said the act didn't apply to it, but that doesn't mean the board can't make add that into the restriction, uh, the 1,700 foot restriction, add pediatric therapy locations. Thank you, sir. Alderman Geis. I, I believe her location that she's talking to, uh, even if we went to a smaller restriction within Dancy, it would protect her section. Uh, in, it would put the businesses all the way on the other end near 51, I, I believe. Yeah, I, I, I go back to the zoning map, Alderman Geist. The way I'm looking at the zoning map, the only businesses or locations on Dancy Boulevard on the east side would be the two that uh, front 51 that are C4. The rest of them are M1. Thank you, Mr. Billy. Anyone else? We thank you, ma'am. I, I wasn't even aware that was operating there. It's okay. Thank you so much. Because I don't have it. My grandchildren are 20, so I don't even know. If my son wasn't in it, I wouldn't know either. Thank you so much. <laughs> Is there anyone else in the audience? Yes, sir. 
if you would, please. Uh, Robert Randall, 1097 Peyton Road, uh, Coldwater, Mississippi. Uh, been a resident of Mississippi now seven years. Uh, we're looking at that Dancy location together, but I just wanted to come up and say thank you for all the hard work that everyone up here has been doing over these last years. Uh, all the concerns that you guys are, are bringing up are, are valid and necessary when these legislations gets rolled out. Uh, I spent a year working for a company called Weed Maps that uh, provides advertising, technology, and software as a service solutions for cannabis operators in medical states as well as adult use states. Spent that year calling them, understanding their challenges as operators, um, whether it be from legislative, operational, inventory, you name it, the gamut of anything that they would face. Uh, and everything you guys bring up are, are valid concerns. And these are challenges that in all these states, every time these uh, laws start getting passed, there's a, there's a growth and maturity that must happen at the state level as well as the local levels. And as we all evolve and learn more about what these products can do for people. Um, one thing I would like to uh, kind of make note of is on letter G, when it talks about the methods of delivery, uh, if edibles would be included in that, I think that is a method of delivery that is a safer alternative to combustibles. And I think a lot of potential patients uh, are more inclined to um, go that route, you know, when, when it's necessary. Um, so I just ultimately just wanted to thank everyone and, and you know, uh, address, you know, if there's any questions, you know, so, you know, you know, I'm one of these that's really skeptical of the media in the last few years, but I, but I read a thing that got chewable marijuana, and it doesn't have the whatever you want to call it chemical that makes you high, right. but it's supposed to be much more effective at alleviating pain and getting you relaxed. Now, would that be a true story? Or everyone's physiology is going to be different. Uh -huh. So it's really going to be dependent on the exact um, chemicals that are going in and how our physiology is going to relate to it. So the exact cannabinoid and chemo type structure that is put into these edibles, whether it's going to have a high psychedelic effect, what we would might refer to as getting high or stoned, whether it would have a more medium kind of effect of something you might consider more like a beer or a glass of wine, or a very minimal um, type of effect that a lot of uh, people are using in athletics, post-athletic workout type st supplements, pre-athletic workout supplements, where uh, in the broader space of the cannabis industry as well as the hemp industry, there is this type of divergence where they're co starting to kind of consider them in those kinds of three kind of levels of like what it does from a psychedelic or from a mental kind of, you know, state of, uh, state of mind or state of being. I don't know if that was your question at all. So if you did have those, if a, if a patient came in with the prescription, it would it would suggest on there what level to give to them. Uh, well, the state mandates specific levels. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm asking. I'm, I don't I'm know. They've capped specific levels on on the con on the amount of THC that can be in uh, both your flower as well as your concentrates. Um, that amount, everyone, especially with edibles, people are going to have various uh, physiological and mental responses because of how our bodies metabolize it differently. Uh, when our body metabolizes uh, delta-9 THC through the liver, it turns into a different chemical, and that's why people have so many different uh, responses off of edibles. If anyone has talked to, I'm sure law enforcement has, is very familiar with varied um, edible responses. So it's something to be careful, and it's something to be mindful of, and something that in our business planning is to have the most educated bud tenders possible. I am planning on, I'm already in the process of enrolling in pharmacy school, uh, either through the University of Maryland or the University of Colorado to uh, get a master's degree in cannabis science and therapeutics to greater understand because due to these um, states and the and like you guys, uh, someone has mentioned before, this is coming, you know. I mean, Olive Branch is, is, is pretty welcoming of the industry. So a lot of operators are going to go where they're welcome. They don't want the friction, just like the law enforcement doesn't want the friction, you know. 
Um, and that's what I, you know, talking to operators in other states, that's, you know, they're going to go places where they're welcome um, and they want to participate in the community and give back to the community that they're in and they want to be a viable part of the community. Um, also, I'd encourage uh, the, when you were talking about the, the girl with the oil, um, there's a Netflix documentary called Weed the People that follows pediatric oncology, tracks eight uh, youth cancer patients through their treatments uh, through different cannabis science, and it is it, an incredibly compelling Netflix documentary on the c efficacy of cannabis. And what was the name of it again, please? Sir? Weed the people. Weed. Weed the people. Forgive the name of it. <laughs> you know, because like like what you said, like I'm for the medical side of it. I'm not for just everyone you know around the corner. You know, getting on the corner stoned. You know, and that's that's why you know I really want to understand more about the physiology and and how things work, but. You guys are, are doing it right, you know, trying to not put the cart before the horse, but at the same time, uh, it's coming. Um, in a lot of places where they've been overly restricted, when I've called into these other markets, they're like, there's like California, one of the oldest states that has laws on the books. There are places in California where the black market proliferates because local legislation has kind of gotten away or local tax code has gotten away and it causes other side effects that aren't really, you know, and so I think Mississippi has done a great job in um, composing their laws uh, to be much more restrictive than a state like Oklahoma that's a little bit wild, wild west. If you've, anyone is familiar with what the market is like out there, even though it's a medical state, um, it, it's extremely wild, wild west. Um, but so again, just thank you, thank you all. I think Mississippi is really doing the best they can and, and from every level down. Well, thank you. We allowed you a little extra time because you were educating us as we go along. Does anybody on the Alderman Bledsoe has a question for you, sir? All right. You know, you say you get some, you chew it like chewing tobacco. It can come in all different forms. I mean, well, do you spit it out I mean, or do you swallow it? They can come in gummies. They can come in chocolates. You, once the plant is decarboxylated, you can actually, if you wanted to chew on it, you could chew on it. Like, okay, you swallow it. If you wanted to. And there's also fiber and dietary uh, benefits as well to the plant. Okay. Well, chewing the back the same way, you can swallow it, but you're going to get sick. You're going to get sick. If you, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Alderman Dupree. Going back to your question, um, how much is any of those gummies, like with the CBD stores around here? I asked, and they're and like two 0.2% or 0.3% THC in those gummies that can be sold now. Correct. So if you eat a whole bunch of them, you're going to get high. And the thing with that is it's a 0.3% by dry weight. And so what a lot of hemp companies are now doing uh, <coughs> that is completely within the USDA federal farm bill is they're creating that 0.3% by dry weight in larger edibles and they're creating more delta 9 THC it would be like a five milligram or a 10 milligram or a 15 milligram and they're getting those dosages higher while still abiding by a separate group of laws than the medical cannabis industry laws. Are you with the, uh, have you done this before in the medical marijuana? Uh, no, sir. My, my experience is in, uh, we are currently starting a hemp business out of Memphis uh, with, I've worked with weed <coughs> here, you know, with them and, um, uh, this is our first foray into the medical cannabis side of it. Been nice to have him on the committee. Yeah. <laughs> also, I'd be happy to any time for. I'm so sorry I didn't uh, come forward a year ago. <laughs> That'd be like a conflict of interest right off the bat. Yeah. <laughs> what wouldn't? What measures are you going to have in place for um, uh, medical marijuana car medical marijuana cars that are fake? How are you going to tell if they're real or not? It's an excellent question and one that we would have to consult with the state on their advice because um, we don't you know, have a, a vetted process for that yet. I think your partner will stand. Is there a picture on it? Okay. As well as a barcode. Yeah. All right. I don't want to give you mine. Mm -hmm. 
Jones. Any more discussion? Any more questions for this gentleman, Alderman Geis? My understanding from the seminar we went to, the marijuana will also be barcoded, won't it? Correct, from seed to sale. So, from, from seed to sale, it will be inventory tracked. So, if law enforcement pulls somebody over, even if they have a card, if they have the marijuana with them, there should be a way to prove that is Correct. legal marijuana as opposed to street or, marijuana. Correct, or or what is known as divergence, which is where medical or adult use mar you know medical marijuana goes in you know to the black market. Thank you. That could be traced. Absolutely. That goes back Any to more questions? That goes back to law enforcement days. If you got ten pills open in your in your car and you don't have your prescription bottle, well, guess what? You're against the law. So I guess you know you follow along those lines. Right. And most most states and most 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 patients are gonna you know that it's extremely sealed um, packaging. You know by law mandated, and most people with any level of common sense aren't gonna open it in their vehicle. You know. So any more? All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Thank you for the information. Mr. Dixon, this is Mr. George Dixon. Yes, sir. Y'all spoke just lightly a while ago about security, a person being security in these buildings or it's in businesses. I'd like to recommend that it be an off-duty or retired police officer or a qualified, licensed, bonded security guard, trained security guard, not somebody walking down the street that they pick, get, pick up and give a street uh, stick to or a six gun and call him security guard. So I think we need to put some regulations on what they're going to have as security. Anybody have any questions for Mr. George? I do. Uh, Mr. George, right here. Uh, that is in the uh, product that was provided. Uh, it is going to be required that during the hours of operation that they will have an armed, licensed security guard in the facility. Okay, yeah, I heard it a while ago, just kind of lightly over that, and I wanted to. Yeah, well, bring no, it up. great question. I just want to make sure you get an answer to it. No, okay. they they will be there. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else? All right, Mr. John, Ms. Johnson. Uh, Alderman Johnson. I just want to say that I appreciate everybody's comments on tonight. I do believe that the uh, metal marijuana will be from prescriptions, even with baking and gummies with edibles, there's an amount that is supposed to go into these. So that is one plus for us. And as I sat to listen to everyone's comment, I couldn't help but to think that everything is about your perception. I don't see chaos and disorder, I see hope. You see, I have two daughters with chronic illnesses. And so for the last 20 or more years, we've been to doctors and hospitals without an answer. So this could be an answer. It, it could be some hope for some relief for my daughters with these illnesses. So it's all about perception. And we know that coming out of the gate, this is something that is definitely new for us. But I think our citizens deserve a shot at us trying. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Are there any more remarks, or is it time to close this public hearing? Uh, Mr. Billy, were you going to say something? I, I, Mr. Mayor, I've, I've got a few questions and comments before, yes, sir. before we close, um, just so that uh, Mr. Barr and I can hopefully draft a clean ordinance for adopt. Um, on the, on the zones, what Mr. Barr presented was for this, for a dispensary to be a permitted use in O, C1, C3, C4, is that still the, Alderman Young said C4 is what came from the committee. Um, what's the will of the board on that? Alderman Bledsoe. Are you gonna attempt to do a motion tonight? Okay. <laughs> well. My recommendation is you let us draft an ordinance because this is going to be an ordinance and it needs to be reduced to writing and everybody needs to know exactly what they're voting on. And 
Sir? What was in the packet? Well, there was a lot in the packet. Um, yeah. Oh, well, it's, it's, it's right here. Yeah, I mean, I mean we can, it. We, can get it, we can get it and scratch through what you're not voting on and... Well, it'll be just, just what the committee found right here. Just very, we got it right here. And I'll be glad to give you this when I'm... I, I, I have that one. I just need to know what to go by here. Okay. This is, that'll be, uh, the, that'll be the motion. Is that, but Mr. Billy is, is I think, all want to know what, how to do this motion. Does the majority of the board wish it to be uh, the recommendations from the Planning Commission, from the office, and C1, C2, C3, C4, or do you want to restrict it to C4? I think Alderman Blitzow has uh, made it C4. C4. Alderman Young, C4. C4. Alderman Dupree, C4. I'm going to go off the recommendation of the uh, committee, C4. All right. Alderman Geis. Mayor, I, I, I still think that one section of Nancy is a prime location for one. Uh, I don't know if how to word it to get that section there included. Uh, if there can be an exception in the ordinance or make that M1 or whatever by not by right but by uh, special. We can do a variance. We can do a variance on Dancy. No, uh, I, I don't know if you can do a variance to state law. The state law was just what said 1,500 feet. No, no, no sir. I, I think uh, uh, what I'm saying is is that have a carve out, just like South Haven did. They did a carve out in the little medical area. We could do a carve out in that one section, uh, long as it uh, isn't 1,700 within 1,700 feet of Maybe. another one. Uh, just in that one section there. That's I think that, you know, we have a business sitting here wanting to come here right now, and that's not why I'm saying this, but to me, I always thought that was a good location for it. It's, uh, it was one of the first places I thought of when we knocked around, when we, I think we all did. Uh, so I know that section's not C4, but I would like to see that included in it. I don't think anything in the state law permits us, uh, prohibits us from setting that section as one. Well, let me jump in right there, Alderman Geis. Um, the, the act says a dispensary may be located in any area in a municipality that is zoned commercial or for which commercial use is otherwise authorized or not prohibited. So that would include that, wouldn't it? Uh, there's it, it, businesses it, there. Well, it says commercial. Um. If I may add in, in, uh, in the land use ordinance, excuse me, the zoning ordinance uh, under Article 12, um, it breaks the, all the land uses into different categories. There's the commercial land uses, the industrial or manufacturing land uses, agricultural, and then like residential. So if I remember correctly, um, even in the commercial category, um, even though a property may have M1 or M2 zoning per the chart, it still can permit a commercial land use. So, um, so what I'm what I'm saying, and we'll get actually get to this in one of the later cases where somebody's requesting M1 zoning. Um, <clears throat> we're we're normally in the let's say the C4 zone. It allows like 54 land uses, commercial land uses by right, but in an M1 zone. If you consider all the land uses that are permitted by right, they're like 86, and that's all industrial and commercial. So I don't know if that if that addresses the question. It does it, it, as Mr. What Mr. Barr said, you could carve out that area and include it. You know, I I, I do want to keep this simple, but to me that is a prime location, uh, not on the side where the business she's talking about. That one section from the road, you know, where the curve is going from El Charo around in front of the body shop down that section where it's not within sight of the business that she's referring to. Alderman Bledsoe. Uh, I take my four and put Dancy with it. So, so what you're talking about, Alderman Geis, is everything east 
of Pasadena on Dancy. Okay. All right, Mr. Campbell, I think you had some more questions. Uh, Mayor, can I point out, I think he got the address up there where this gentleman is, and he is located in M1. On M1? Thank you, sir. Ms. Carter, what was your address? I mean, I mean, the, the um, business. I can't hear. Is it by the all-star management back behind Meineke and all that in that section there? It's it's right there. Yeah, it's west. It's west, west of Pasadena. From the school then. Okay. Yeah, it's west of Pasadena. Yeah. yeah. Anything else, Mr. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm, I'm, I believe Alderman Young is going to make a motion to adopt. Mayor, that business is 1751 Dancy. 1751 Dancy. Go ahead, Mr. Billy. Mr. Campbell, could you go ahead, please, sir? I, I, I'm thinking Alderman Young is going to make a motion to adopt the two page. Um, of regulations that the committee came up with as opposed to what Alderman Barr put on the screen. So I'm going to try to work off of that if everybody has that in anticipation. Um, let me first caution you that that does not contain a definition of medical cannabis dispensary, which I think is important for zoning ordinance purposes. Additionally, it does not uh, prohibit it cultivation, disposal, processing, researching, testing, or transportation facilities. Uh, I, I question the need for number three on that list that um, requires the facilities to regularly test all exhaust so they don't allow residual smell. Um, since this, we're just talking about dispensaries, that shouldn't be an issue. On number four on page two, it mentions the sale of CBD items. That is not allowed in a dispensary. Uh, a dispensary can only sell medical cannabis, medical cannabis equipment, and medical cannabis supplies. So the city allowing <coughs> CBD items that would uh, run in conflict to the state act and the Department of Revenue regulations. Uh, also, question number six, which uh, it says the committee will incorporate the DeSoto County decision as required within the city limits. Uh, DeSoto County opted into everything, uh, cultivation, disposal, processing, research, testing, and transportation. So some of the things in the DeSoto County ordinance is not applicable to Horn Lake. So those are my caution items if the board moves forward with adopting the two pages uh, presented by the committee. And it would seem after Mr. Campbell's remarks that perhaps we would like for him to put together all this and be prepared at the next meeting. But if anyone certainly wants to make a motion tonight, they most certainly can. It's, before we close this public hearing, is there anyone on the board that wish to make a statement? Is anybody in the audience? Mr. Campbell? No, sir. Mr. Mayor, Barr? Is this, is this working? Okay, it's working. I, I might add that on the measuring of the distance, when we look at the map, r regardless of whatever the distance is, 1,000, 1,500, 1,700, 28, whatever distance might be, 
the staff were going to measure it from property line of, let's say, it's school, church, daycare, um, to the property line of the property with whatever the zoning would be. So even if part of the restricted area cuts a swath through that uh, property that has commercial zoning, we're going to disallow it. So I just want I just want the board to, to be aware of that. Thank you, sir. Anything else from the audience? Excuse me. That being the case, this public hearing is closed. Do y'all, does anyone on the board have a Alderman Geis? Uh, Mayor, I, uh, I am ready to get this business behind us, but I also think that we need to have this written down in a proper manner so after the fact we don't look at it and say that, hey, we didn't want that or we didn't think of that. So I think it would be wise for our attorney and the uh, planning director to take what's been presented here and put it in a ordinance and the word, correct wording for the zoning uh, stuff so we uh, get this right uh, and have it try to have it ready as soon as we can have it for a board meeting. Yes, sir. Um, you know, and also I'd like, you know, you know I think once we have it in writing, we can look at it, and then we can vote on that particular ordinance as written. Uh, you know, and uh, the uh, the idea of the DeSoto County ordinance, uh, we liked the way it was written, but basically we've written our own now, uh, and we'll have ours, so that doesn't need to be in there. The uh, CBD items, I think that's there uh, because we aren't knowledgeable of the products so in our mind the CBD items were the medical marijuana stuff uh, so if that needs to be changed to stay within accordance to state law we we want that done but uh, uh, we would uh, request that we stick to 1700 feet but I do ask the board that once we do 1700 feet if we see that it's very too restrictive that we would come back and consider changing it uh, but it, at the moment, have 1,700 in the ordinance. Alderman Klein. Well, I'm in agreement with uh, Alderman Geis as far as. Yes, Mayor. Geis. I'm in agreement with, with Alderman Geis. I would also like to ask the, uh, the board attorney that whenever we write this, uh, the Dancy Avenue west, east of Pasadena, on the retail side, you know, facing the street, just like we require everywhere else, be included as a use area, as permitted through the planning department. It had to be required permit and all that kind of stuff, whatever requires that M, M, M1 or whatever to be used as a retail location for medical cannabis. I, I would uh, humbly ask the uh, committee and the planning department and Mr. Campbell to communicate. It sounds like everybody's kind of on board just to stay fine-tuned and uh, make sure we're all understanding what the other person says. I would add, ask that y'all please work together. So if, if there is no motion, we can either go to the next item or take a five-minute or ten-minute break. What do y'all want to do? Take a break. Take a break. Sounds good. If y'all will excuse us, 10 minutes. Hey, Mayor. Oberfuhrer.
is a public hearing also, which I declare open. Mr. Barr, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Yeah. This uh, case was also heard by the Planning Commission back on January the 30th. Um, it's case number 2115 PCI, PCI standing for a Planning Commission Initiative. Uh, if you go back to, uh, in memory, to last year, the latter part of last year, uh, there was some discussion <coughs> came through the department on the parking of commercial vehicles in certain areas of town where they're allowed, where they're not allowed. Um, and then parking commercial vehicles on commercial properties, um, which actually to a certain extent is restricted in the, within the city, um, except for certain uses. So what the Planning Commission initiated was a p potential text amendment, um, which they did look at then on January the 30th, and then that's been forwarded to you for consideration tonight. <coughs> so I'll go through with uh, what's the proposed uh, text on this particular case. So right now, obviously, the zoning ordinance, um, you know, allows uh, certain uses of in vehicle vehicular areas for parking of certain motor vehicles. It's for loading and unloading, vehicle circulation, maneuvering. This is I'm looking at um, uh, item item E uh, in the uh, in the PowerPoint. It comes uh, directly from the zoning ordinance. It allows for the temporary parking of authorized construction maintenance type vehicles on property. And then going on to letter F within the zoning district, excuse me, within the zoning ordinance, there's specifically prohibited uses is uses of vehicular areas. Um, and that's for like vehicle uh, dismantling, repair, restoration, service work, um, offering or display of vehicles or other merchandise for sale, rent, lease, uh, storage of any kind and, uh, and so forth. So what's proposed uh, as a way to help alleviate potentially um, some of the difficulties that some um, uh, drivers in town that either own or as a part of their job uh, have commercial vehicles that they need a place to park them in a legal sense. Um, and so, because what the code has been doing lots of times is, is, is basically just chasing them around town where they don't have a place to park uh, in a proper sense uh, in, a, in a large uh, uh, addressed area. So the proposed text amendment is to uh, address that. So under item E, let's see, this would be um, uh, article seven, item E, allowable uses of vehicular areas, uh, suggested new language is a number six. Uh, the parking of a, of a commercial vehicle or vehicle shall be possible upon, um, upon land with a, with a commercial zoning classification if the following steps are met and provided to the city for review and approval. So the concept here is something that we call is a, basically a, a parking permit per parcel, that P4, um, is that it would be a, something done administratively by the department at, with no fee at no cost. Um, there's still a procedure to follow as, as what's proposed, um, but hopefully would uh, give a, a bit of a, a valve, if you will, a relief um, for parking of certain vehicles uh, in commercial areas. So what's proposed here is that obviously an applicant would have to fill out a commercial parking permit application. We'd have to build that. Uh, written permission or authorization shall be granted by a landowner of a commercially zoned property or its legal representative. Said permission shall also be notarized by a public notary. Uh, item C, uh, the maximum commercial parking allowance shall be 5% of the total number of parking spaces allocated towards a use uh, or, or property. Uh, handicapped spaces shall be included in the total number and then I've got a formula there for rounding. Um, item D, uh, rounding of the part to calculate the parking space is allowed. Uh, D, if approved, the time of validity of said uh, commercial parking permit shall be uh, for, for two years from the date of city approval. So it gives a little bit of length or time um, to the idea. Uh, item E, approved parking permit shall be posted or made available within a commercial building uh, located upon the subject parcel uh, for inspection uh, by city personnel. Uh, item F, uh, and then this is just a reminder, uh, as a reminder, uh, parking lot maintenance requirements are found in item H, uh, numbers four through I think six of the zoning ordinance. It's just as a remembrance, if there's gonna be a, a parking of these commercial vehicles, there's also a responsibility upon the parcel owner to maintain their uh, commercially zoned parking lot. Uh, that came out of the Planning Commission was an also an item G, which there would be no hazardous materials that would be allowed to be stored 
within these vehicles um, if they're parked there. Uh, so that's the idea, the concept, um, a po potential text amendment. Planning Commission uh, recommended approval of that with that added condition uh, uh, item G um, of the no hazardous materials stored there. And they did that back on uh, January the 30th. That com complete the uh, presentation unless you have any questions. All right, sir. Mr. Barr, may I ask you something, sir? All right, letter B, written permission shall be granted by a landowner. So the operator of the truck would have to go get permission from the business to park there. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, that's an excellent question. Yeah, that's the idea is that the, it's, if there's a commercial per, person that has a commercial vehicle, whether they own it or they lease it or they drive it, but they need a place legally to park it, um, so they come in, get the application, but they would also get that written authorization from that property owner. They would have to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion. They would talk about terms, if there's if there's going to be any fee, or if it's just gonna, they're just going to allow it, the property owner's going to allow it. Um, but yeah, they would have to actually go and get that written per permission from the property owner, him or herself. Thank you, sir. And, and then going down to uh, letter E, uh, the permit should be posted. So the owner or operator of the truck would have to go to the owner or, or operator of the commercial building. That's then, correct. So the, the hope is... The permit would have to be posted even though it wasn't in the property owner's name. This permit would have to be posted inside the building? That is correct. Yeah, that way uh, code, I mean, hopefully we'll keep a, like an inventory or list within the department. But if there's any confusion or if they if they if it's a new person, let's say, uh, doing an inspection from code enforcement or there's a crossover from one um, person's case or property to another as far as an inspection, they can go right to that property and they, they can see that posted or they can ask for that. Um, so they can see that, OK, yeah, in this particular location, three of these commercial vehicles are permitted um, or two or one or whatever the number would be. So that would that way they have an idea what they're looking for out in the parking lot. Thank you, sir. And you mentioned that basically chasing trucks around. So if I understand what was implied is someone might have their truck parked illegally, code goes, tell them they got to move it, and they just move it to another illegal location. So you're having to chase them all around. I know that's getting away from this, but I would hope that, uh, and I'm by no means telling you how to run your department. I'm just saying that hopefully if somebody was doing that, uh, your staff would pop them pretty good, you know, write them up. Yes, I, I don't know. I'd have to talk with the individual, with the code enforcement to see what their protocol is on that. I think they usually give like 24 or 48 hours notice for them to move the yeah, But then uh, if they unit. just move to another illegal location, you're not, all you did was give them another 24 hours to move. You're just like, well, like you said, chasing them around the city. Yes. But that's another issue, but thank you. Does anybody on the board have any questions? Alderman Bledsoe. Uh, I have one, Chad, and this might not be for now. Uh, is it just for Horn Lake people that has trucks? I thought that's what we started this for, so they could park there, and they'd have a place, and then they could go to their house without having people come all over the country and park there. And then when they get home, they don't have a place to park. Uh, yes, Alderman uh, Bled. So that's a very good thought. We could incorporate uh, within this uh, either as you know actual wording and text, or just as a matter of policy that it would be just available to people that have a residence that, that actually live uh, in Horn Lake. So it doesn't get to be that people from other communities just come here and want to park their commercial vehicles in our town. Um, one thing uh, I didn't mention or whatever, but we did consider you know. The wear and tear on obviously where where these trucks can be parked. You know, you have the the in the ingress and egress mov movements on the driveway aprons, if you will, in in and out of these properties. And um, we did consider, you know, making it um, you know, have a formal like, well, is is the the driveway apron that's provided there? Is it going to be enough to handle the traffic? But um, we're feeling that the, the, the number at 5% is small enough, and there's probably already commercial trucks going to some of these properties, whether it be deliveries or it's just a customer that's going to use, um, you know, that particular business that day or whatever, um, and they, they park, and they just happen to be not in their private vehicle, but in their commercial truck, and then they go and park, they, you know, they purchase or do whatever, and then they, then they leave or whatever. 
because um, I did consider like, well, maybe we should have, you know, the driveway aprons bored and then engineering can look at the boring or whatever to see if it's, I, I don't know how all that works, if that's an easy call or a difficult thing to call from an engineering standpoint. They get a boring of, of what's there as far as concrete and asphalt and sub base and all that stuff to say that, yeah, this should handle additional traffic or, or, the, or not. So, but I thought with, with the with the five percent allowance or whatever that should be within hopefully what's the traffic that's already happening now, um, but just that the parking would be something where they could park there for longer periods of time than just being like an ordinary customer um, um, to a particular uh, business. That was an excellent question, Alderman Bledsoe. Did you have something else? Yeah, I got a dumb one. Yes, sir. Uh, all right, one of those places we're talking about has white rock now and it's covered over half by grass. So when they pull in there on white rock and it's been raining three or four days, the 18 wheelers are gonna squish it down. So does anything have asphalt or X number? And then in the back, you got the mechanic place back there. Uh, they got to drive it, I guess that's dirt back that way. It's um, are, you, are you referring to the property at, um, what is it, I think the 51 Highway. Yes, it's, I think it's what, 6641, I mean, which we have a case, there's a couple of cases later on this evening on a rezoning and the conditional use, which on that particular case, what's proposed, I mean, obviously the city requirement is if they're gonna do any type of uh, parking such as this with the heavier vehicles, the larger vehicles that they, they would be paved either with asphalt or concrete or some mixture thereof, either with base or sub base, so. Well, the reason I brought it up years ago, we had trailers parked down on Dancy Boulevard and they got stuck. They put red gravel out there and red gravel and clay. And then when it rained, they had to go out there with re uh, records to pull them out. And uh, maybe they can put a fence up front and make it where it don't look so bad. Old Boston. Yeah, I just had a real quick question. Um, will it be up to the property owner of the, of the commercial property to regulate if the drivers can sleep in their cabs overnight at these locations, or would it be something that we need to regulate if that's just for parking and they have to leave the premise? I don't want it to become a mini truck stop. Good thought. Th that's a very good thought. Um, if it's if it's the, the sentiment of the board, that could be something that could be added in for wording if that was uh, something that was you wanted specific. So it's mainly just parking, not for parking and sleeping. Um, it just could be for parking, um, and then the, the driver, you know, when their, their shift starts, whenever that is, day or night, they come and pick up the vehicle um, when, they're, when they need to. Man, that's a good question, too. Anybody? Oliver Dupree. Um, we we'll go back to your question of how do we know if they live in Grand Lake. How about permits? They come in, spend $2, $3, $5, whatever, for a permit sticker to put on their vehicle. Then... Uh, then that way, code enforcement or law enforcement goes by and they see the sticker, hey, we know they got a permit. They live in Horn Lake. If they don't, then, you know, take other, other action. But I think a permit would uh, settle a lot of this. Anybody else? Alderman Young. Mr. Barr, when these trucks are this 5% or whatever is allowed to park them, does that include trailers loaded or emptied? I would say to answer that, if it has like a commercial tag, I guess it could be subject to that 5%. And obviously the 5% is just an idea. I mean, it could be if it's the I'm, I'm not worried, I'm talking about, I don't think that the truck should be allowed to have a trailer parking on a person's private lot, like a gas station, which is what this is about. This is not about the large place on 51. I don't think they should be allowed to pull a trailer into a gas station or a convenience store or have them parked all over up and down Goodman Road at a Mexican restaurant or whatever. I don't think we need to include tractor trailers. I think it just needs to be the power unit only. And I would, with what Alderman Dupree just said is a really good idea, but I think even maybe a step further as a suggestion is on the permit when we take the permit into the business owner that they make sure that when they the owner operator or whoever signs the permit on there we might want to put this is for parking only no sleeping no yada 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 no funny business no nothing so that might be something we might want to look at but other than that thank you i, I think you're right on tar on target there 
So, yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, I think uh, that's something that the board wanted to specify, just, just the tractor portion, uh, not the trailer portion. Uh, I think that definitely could be uh, specified in the wording. Um, and then obviously when we, if, if approved, when we create the process, we could have a permit, we could actually have like something maybe that, that's, that sticks to the vehicle or something at some location. We could have like dual notification basically where the property owner is providing uh, notice to the city that they've been get, they've been given permission or right. been authorized to allow so much parking there, but they can also look at the vehicle to make sure it's the right vehicle. Yeah, I think that's great. And the reason I'm worried about the trailers is there again. I'm going to go back to the police department. If you have a loaded tractor trailer sitting out there with Nike shoes or TVs or whatever, God forbid, may be in that thing, the opportunity is for it to get broke into. And, you know, I just don't think we need to open that door. Those need to be in a secure location, put up somewhere, dock, trailer, whatever. Then you'll get the trailer wherever it is. Just don't bring it to Horn Lake. He's going to park over the weekend or over the holiday. or whatever. That's, that's what's my concern about that. Yeah. Alderman Blitzo. I got two more things. Uh, one thing, uh, whoever does this there, needs to make sure they don't work on their trucks out there. We have this problem that years ago when I was the MA director up at Phillips 66 behind there, it was, it was dirt. They pulled in there, changed oil, did everything, throw stuff on the ground. And uh, we tried to get them stopped a couple of times, but didn't have too much success. So I don't know if they're still doing it or not, but we might want to check into it. But we don't need a whole lot of oil and grease and stuff and then working on their vehicles. There's just gonna be a shop where I'm talking about behind the thing there that they work, work on uh, vehicles. I just don't want a, a mess up there like we had at Phillips 66. Alderman Guys. I just, I have two questions. Uh, is there gonna be a limit to the number of businesses that can get, allow trucks to park on them and uh, is there a certain size? You know, you got a strip shopping center, they approve them to park in front of it, then a gas station, then the daycare, you know, because their cousin has a truck. And then are we eventually going to have trucks and utility vehicles and stuff parked in every commercial lot in the city? Um, to comment on that, yeah, right now it's not propo uh, proposed to have any differentiation. So it's um, as far as um, oh, like one commercial ve one commercial property over another, uh, or one commercial type of vehicle over another. That that wording would have to be added in. Let's say like no semi trailers, just have like the tractor available there um, for parking. Okay, thank you. Any more questions before we open up on the floor? Alderman Dupree. So, Mr. Chad, you're saying that any commercial property can give permission for a truck to park in their parking lot? Yes, it would be up to the discretion of the owner if they wanted to give that um, permission and if they wanted to, um, if they wanted to do that for a fee, basically, um, and then whatever the percentage would be that the city would set, if it's the five percent or more or less or whatever. No, as I thought we were trying to clean up the city. I'll make it a, a parking lot for tractor trailers. Anybody else before I open it up? Anybody in the audience have anything to say? Mr. Francis J. Miller, please. We, we have your address, sir. <laughs> 14 year voting resident Ward 5. Okay, I agree with um, Mr. Dupree, 100%. Um, we don't want vehicles parked all over. I would suggest, and the, the, you need that parking sticker on the vehicle so code enforcement, you will not find it in the building. So it has to be uh, something on the vehicle so code enforcement can find it. And you definitely need to charge a fee for this because it's involving that. You mentioned $2, I mentioned $10 or more. And I would say put a maximum of one vehicle per commercial lot so we don't have them everywhere. So maximum one vehicle per lot 
$10 or more fee, get it on the window, and that will help. And then the rest of the regulations that you already came up with. Thank you, sir. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Francis? Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else in the audience? Mr. Dixon, please. I do have a couple for Mr. Barrow here. Is this supposed to take care of getting all the commercial vehicles out of our neighborhoods? Well, it, it's supposed to help address that to a certain degree. Whether it will be the final Alderman, solution Alderman to that, Young, I doubt it. Alderman Young has got our ward posted, well posted, with no trucks yet. We get some in there every night that can one oh, I say every night. About once, twice a week, I got one coming by my house. Now, some truck drivers are smart. They're going to be off for 10 hours. You've got 24 hours they can sit there. So they park in front of, on the street or in the driveway and at their house. You come along and give them a ticket, a warning. They laugh at you because a few, 10 hours later, they're going to move it. Next week or week after, next they'll be back again doing the same thing. We need to stop the commercial vehicles to stay out of our neighborhoods. Well, I guess if it's the wishes of the board, we could change the policy of the department and just write a ticket up on everybody all the time. I guess that's what I keep hearing. That would be okay for, for lots of stuff. Like I keep hearing that message or whatever is that, but I don't know. I mean, we, well, that driver's smart enough to know what goes on and what's not going on. I know because I've done it myself. <laughs> uh, I've parked in many a place I wasn't supposed to. Are you smart? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is we need to get them out of our neighborhood. I mean, it ain't no pleasure to sit there and listen to one of them 18-wheelers come by my house every day or during the week, especially 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. We got signs everywhere that says no trucks, no commercial vehicles, yet we got them. Mr. Mayor. Alderman Dupree. Mr. George, I, I couldn't agree with you more. We got two comes in my neighborhood every week sitting at the same house. They get 24 hours to move it. Guess what? Next week, they're back the same thing. They get another notice. It's repetitive. We've got to stop this one time. Write the tag number down, write the color, write the address down. They come back after the first time, then you cite them. You've already been told, you've already been warned. I am, I'm sick of it. I'm telling you, I'm going to start calling the mayor to call your office every time I see a, a tractor trailer. Every day I see a tractor trailer in, in Ward 6 parked. I'm going to start letting you know until something's got something's got to be done. Well, Mr. Uh, Mr. Barr referenced that the first. He said they're chasing them all over the city. But I, I'm That's like, right. y'all are talking about one warning, and next time you knew better. That's right. That's exactly what I would exactly like to right. propose tonight, right now. The board thinking. Motion. Mayor. Alderman Young. I completely agree with with Mr. Dupree. Um, second, the point I want to make is code enforcement, they're, they're, they're doing a heck of a job now. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. You're doing a really good job with these people. You really are. A lot of improvement. Mr. Dixon is right, though. Um, what I, and this is just a suggestion, Mayor, I just think the code enforcement and the police department need to really work together closer because the police department is out there at nighttime when these trucks are coming in. And I myself have seen them drive right by a tractor trailer sitting on the side of the road. They need to ticket the damn thing. They need to write them a ticket. Mayor, if you, I mean, Major, if you would bring that up to Chief tomorrow, appreciate it. I mean, I know they can't be everywhere all the time. They're, they're under, I mean, they're doing all they can do. Both departments are doing an outstanding job. Mm -hmm. But if you're out on a patrol, and you happen to ride down 123 Widget Street and you see a tractor trailer sitting there, guess what? You're sworn to, to uphold the laws of the state and the city. You're wearing a badge. Stop. Tell them to move it out of the ward, out of the residential area or whatever, or write them a ticket, or better yet, call Barnhart. I don't care how it works. 
I, I think I think it's been like like Mr. Barr said. It seems to be the uh, consensus on the board to to uh, kind of get a little tough. I know Mr. Barr just took this over. Remember in January, and is trying to organize it and hire new people. But we've gotten off the subject a little bit here, and we kind of need to go back. Anybody else out there got anything to say? Mr. Campbell, you have anything? I do not, Mr. Mayor. Anybody on the board before we close the public hearing? All right, that being the case, public hearing is now closed. We have a motion. Alderman Young. I make a motion on case number 21-115 as written with the inclusion of allowing the permit to be on a placard on the vehicle as well as with the wording that was described when they signed the sign up for the permit that there is no sleeping or funny business or whatever in the truck that they go there they turn it off no more than five percent of the parking area and I'm also going to ask the permit the, the planning department and the police department to work together to control this would you consider Alderman Bledsoe's suggestion about it has to be a, a resident of Horn Lake? Yes, resident of Horn Lake is a must. All right. And Mr. Yeah, sir? Be be before you go with the second mayor, the other two things I wrote down from the discussion was trucks or tractors only, no trailers, and no repairs or maintenance being done. We have a motion by Alderman Young. Do we have a second? We have a motion. Do we have a second? Third and last call. Do we have a second to the motion? Second. Second by Alderman Bledsoe. Is there any discussion? Mayor. Mayor. Alderman Johnson. Will there be a time limit on how long they can sit there? Would it be two days, the weekend? How long would they be able to sit? Just think about vehicles that may not be in operating condition it says somewhere in the thing that says they can't it? do repairs can't do repairs but that doesn't mean you can't let it sit there right good point do we have anything in there about that mr barr we can certainly add if it's not yeah we would um I mean, obviously, the, the city's basic definition of an operable vehicle is something that's got a current tag, and it's basically can start on demand. Okay. Um, and so it has to meet both of those to be a, an operable vehicle. Um, and we would do that with, with these as well. Um, I guess if they want to leave them there for, you know, lengthy periods of time, that could be up to the discretion of the owner unless the city wanted to limit that. Um, but it would be difficult to administer. It's another thing that, you know, these trucks here are only supposed to be for 12 hours, and these over here are just for a day, or these are only for like six hours. I, maybe we could just come up with a uniform time or whatever to make it applicable to all the vehicles. Um, that would be my recommendation if the board wanted to go that route. Yeah. Uh, Alderman Klein. Uh, and that brings up that uh, since we've had problems. Uh, with it being in the neighborhood, uh, if they're there and they don't have a permit, are you writing a warning or are you writing a ticket? It's called D Davenport. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that was discussed by Alvin Young and Mr. Barr a while ago. They want to write him a ticket. Is that is that going to be in the ordinance though? Is what I'm saying. No, I, to me that seems more like just a matter of uh, city policy or department policy on how they want to handle and enforcement on those issues, not necessarily um, germane to this particular case. I mean, it's similar, but it's not. Alvin Bledsoe. Uh, Chad, is this where they need to put a fence up that you can't see through, uh, or is that later on? That would be later on, on another case. Okay. All right. Alderman Young, Alderman Johnson requested that you consider putting in there about how long they could stay. 
Are you willing to do that to your motion, or do you want your motion to stay like it is? 48 hours maximum. Well, uh, and then I'm asking, I'm asking to, Alderman to Alderman Johnson and you, on Mr. Barr pointed out how difficult that was going to be to enforce. You could have it in there, but I can't see this being a big problem because I can't see business owners wanting a truck taking up their parking space well, instead of somebody coming in and spending money with them. You know, I know this came about because that one gentleman, and I know this would probably help some of our truck drivers, but if all they can park there is their tractor and they can't have a place to park their trailer, well, they're not going to be parked there anyway. Well, Mayor. Sir. Um, I don't, I, I'm just, I'm thinking out loud here. Okay, please. I'm with Alderman Johnson's. Do we need, because with, if I'm wrong, Mr. Barr, tell me I'm wrong on this, but within our city codes and within our our truck in the in the neighborhoods and this that and the other there's a 10,000 pound gross limit correct yeah there, there is some weight limit I'd have to, I, it could I think be it's 10,000 pounds I, I thank you and I discussed so if, if, if we did something like that and said okay fine you can park at ABC's grocery or one two threes liquor store or whatever happens to be um, if we put a weight limit, saying no, no more maximum, not any more than 10,500 pounds, that would include most rollbacks and most Class C wreckers, which is where a lot of our problem really is, to be honest with you. I mean, of course, power units are. But the next thing on our agenda is, is, to, is to discuss power units and, and other larger vehicles. So to prevent having trucks like I've, I've heard here all over the city, parked all over, would it be feasible for us to consider a weight limit? Would it be conceivable and a time limit? Would it be? Con I, I don't know. I'm asking. Most semi truck, uh, if they have a, if they have a, a just a day cab, they're somewhere around eleven one. And if they're uh, if if they've got a condo on it or a large sleeper or whatever, they're going to be pushing fifteen. Depending on what, what you know, if it's, if it's a Western Star, they're going to be seventeen, eighteen thousand. But uh, it just depends on the type of the truck, you know. Uh, that'd be know. up to the board. I, I, I don't know. Of course, there's a lot of signs that say no trucks, and you got the weight limit, and they go down them anyway. That'd be be for the police to enforce. Right. I, I, are we making things mm -hmm. too? Complicated. Do we? Yes, we are. We need to get back to what we were talking about. What Chairman Johnson suggested. Alderman Johnson. I was going to suggest. Um, Mr. Barr has said that that would be very hard for them to regulate the days that the uh, vehicles are parked. So if we begin to see it as a problem, we can just revisit it. <laughs> Have no problem with that. So you're you're satisfied. And not asking Alderman Young to put that on to his motion. Yes, sir. Your motion still stands. Your motion still stands, sir. Second still stands. All right. Any more discussion? Uh, Mayor. The only thing, Mayor, is uh, whoever, if he parks there too long, the guy that owns or who's solding the permit, he's got to do that. Yeah, not us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's maybe. Solding the move. If his, if his business, <laughs> he'll be messing up his own business. If he, Mr. Barr. Just to remember, it, it will be a city-issued permit. It will, I mean, it'll be, but it's based upon authorization given by the landowner. Well, the landowner we, could withdraw the per, his permission any time. If yes, if, if if they have if if they that the landowner comes up with something that you know, let's say the city is not aware of, and they just want it to end. I, I think we we could have it very well recognized that they just want to end it, and then we could just say, okay, the, the, the permit's been revoked, and so they need to, to move the unit. Well, the permit will be in effect the, the two years or the discretion of the landowner or the, or the merchant, whatever you want to go. But that would give the merchant the discretion to end it in case he had a dispute, taking up time, looking bad. Would you consider putting that in your motion? Sure. Thank you. Yes, is there a second that good on that, Mr. T Alderman Bledsoe? Yes. yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Any more discussion? Mayor. Alderman Geis. Um, I know we have an issue with this, and 
I know we need a solution for this, but I don't know, in my opinion, given businesses the opportunity to let their parking lots get, all of them have these vehicles parked in it all over the place. I don't know if that's the correct solution to it. Uh, I think the possibly the correct solution to it is down the road in these, our agenda here with someone getting a parking lot specially built for these people to park in one location that will have security or whatever. You know, I, you know, I understand record drivers and people with utility trucks, you know, drive them home and it's a problem, but I just don't see every business you go to being able to have two or three of them in the parking lot is the answer to this. That's just my opinion. All right, sir. Any more discussion? I closed the public hearing, didn't it? That's how long ago. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. All right. If there's no more discussion, roll call, please, Miss Julie. Alderman Carr. Uh, nay. Alderman Bledsoe. Nay. Alderman Carr. Nay. Alderman nay. nay. Well, I, did, I didn't get Alderman Bledsoe's. Was it yay or nay, sir? Nay. Nay. All right, sir. Alderman Dice. Nay. Alderman Boxer. Nay. Alderman Johnson. Nay. Alderman Dupree. Nay. Alderman Young. Nay. Motion. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's already 8:30. The the motion fails by a vote of seven to nothing. Uh, first time I've ever been on a board when the person who made the motion and the second voted against the motion. We 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 way out in the weeds right now. We got to get back on track. <laughs> I think we need to kind of refocus here a little bit. All right, Mr. Barr, we're coming up for. 2117RZ, which is a public hearing, which is now open. Mr. Barr, please. Uh, let me adjust my papers here. Hold on. <laughs> I think you're kind of stunned, aren't you, Mr. Barr? Uh, no, not really. So yes, uh, the next case up is uh, case 2117RZ, uh, which is a rezoning request by Jorge Bailey, who's the applicant and owner, and Civil Link is the engineering company uh, consisting of 8.4 acres to rezone uh, from the current C4 planned commercial district to the M1 light industrial district. Uh, the location is 6641 US Highway 51 North. And this uh, particular case was taken up by the Planning Commission uh, again, on that January 30th date, they did recommend approval of the rezoning request. We'll just hit a, a few slides here or whatever. Um, with this particular, uh, oops, that picture, if we could go back to the uh, rezoning. There we go. Yeah, when I built the, uh, the PowerPoints, uh, for this meeting or whatever, they came from several sources, and so it didn't matter how I tried to save it, it always put it at some angle, and so when I tried to change the angle or the dimension, then it would change others, so I could never get them all to line up. So Julie's doing very good tonight as, as uh, she needs to adjust as we see slide to slide, so thank you, Julie. So yeah, you can see the subject property there highlighted in blue. It's got the C4 zoning, and there's C4 zoning to the north and to the south. There's PUD zoning to the east and then M1 zoning uh, to the west of the subject property. Uh, next slide. The property is located uh, entirely in the 100 year flood plain. Okay, you're at the end then. Um, just just for, for the record's sake, uh, currently the, the C4 zoning does allow um, 54 land uses by right uh, through the city's zoning ordinance. And then with the M1 zoning, including the commercial zoning, excuse me, the commercial land uses that are permitted by right, um, and then also the additional ones that are manufacturing or industrial of, of nature, there would be a total of 86 land uses um, that would be permitted um, by right uh, if the M1 zoning was granted. Now, the landowner has expressed and seen in the next case that they desire to do um, uh, a conditional use, and if the conditional use is uh, approved by the city to uh, uh, park semi-trucks there, 
and then also to continue the auto repair shop that's already there. Um, and so that, that might be something that the city wants to take into um, consideration because um, if the city would deny the conditional use, um, then they would be potentially looking at 86 uh, land uses that are permitted by right. That means you wouldn't get to visit it again. Um, the Planning Commission could visit it if it was a design review as far as involving like new buildings or that sort of thing. Um, so I've been I'm stating that and then the owner wouldn't actually have to do the conditional use. They could just do whatever's, you know, as authorized through the zoning ordinance with the 86 land uses uh, with if with M1 zoning. So I just state that the Planning Commission recommended approval of the request of the rezoning uh, to M1. Con conclude the presentation unless you have any questions. Thank you, Mr. Barr. Does everyone on the board have any questions? Just one, Mayor. Alderman Young. Uh, Ms. Julie, can you go back to the overlay, please? Thank you. Mr. Barr, um, does this rezoning include the residential house that's on that property? Uh, it does. It's a very good question. It's been expressed by the landowner that um, if the rezoning is approved and then eventually the next case, the conditional use request is, a, is approved, is that they would want to utilize the house, which was built before 1957, um, from what we can tell, um, as a part of uh, the commercial aspect, basically the service, uh, the, the parking of the trucks there. I guess, I guess they might start some parts there. They might have an office there, that sort of thing. You might be able to get some more detail if the, if the applicant has is either here or the owner's here tonight. Dispensary. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, reason, the reason I was wondering, I mean, so that means they will not be using that that sec that house for a rental property anymore. They're going to use it for a business, correct? Yes, because basically if it, you know, if the M1 zoning was, I mean, right now with the C4 zoning, the, the residential use is non-conforming. Exactly. Um, but it would also be that uh, as well in M1. So, um, okay. yeah. thank you, sir. Anyone else have any questions? Anyone in the audience? Sir. Oh, Alderman, Ge I'm sorry, Alderman Geist did. I'm sorry, Alderman. I'm, I'm trying to think of something you said. You said in C4, this use would be a conditional use. Is that correct? Uh, are you referring to the, the truck parking land use? Yes, sir. No, it's, it's not permitted at all. That's why the request to go to the I, this, excuse me, the M1 zoning. The M1 zoning basically paves the way, no pun intended. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> the, um, the way from a property rights standpoint to <coughs> basically ask for the conditional use to park the semi-trucks there. And under the, uh, the, if we change it, that opens it up to 80-something different uses? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Anyone else on the board? Now, if you give your name and address, please, sir. My name is Chase Dabbs. I live at 3624. Uh, I'm just representing Mr. Bailey on this application. I'm here to answer any questions y'all might have. Representing <coughs> who, sir? Mr. Bailey. Jorge Bailey. Mr. Jorge? Mm -hmm. All right. Mr. Jorge Bailey is the, is the owner of the property. Does anyone on the board have any questions for this gentleman? I do. All right, um, sir. They're, they're going to go back to the house. Are they going to be using that for a business? Yes. yes. Okay. When do they plan on doing that? Because right now it's rented. It's got people living in it. Well, he plans to remodel it. If it gets rezoned M1, plans to remodel it, use it as an office space, pave the park right and everything of it. So immediately if uh, Cindy Miss gets approved. What's his plan for paving the property to allow these trucks in there? Asphalt. We'll come up with a structure. Uh, when? That's actually on the next application. Uh, I don't know if you've got the site plan. He's basically going to pave that whole first square right there this right. year. The whole back square, 2024, except for that top portion because it's already paved. All right, so you're going to asphalt? Yes. Are you going to have, uh, George, Mr. Dixon, please refer, what are they called where you drop your trailer on concrete pads? A concrete pads, yeah. Are, are you going to have concrete pads for drop facilities because asphalt will not hold that? It was intended for asphalt. I, I believe if we get the structure thickness up, thick enough, to hold up under the weight. Uh, you, no. 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 Uh, we're going to have to have I'm concrete I'm pads. Actually, I'm an engineer. So you're telling me asphalt's going to hold up 47,800 pounds? If you have the correct thickness, it will. Have you ever driven a truck? No, sir. I've never driven a truck, but I've okay. designed roads. Mayor? 
Alderman Dupree. I've been to some of these parking lots <laughs> when I did part-time security. When it's 100 degrees outside, that asphalt for 150, 60 degrees, it's going to sink. I've seen it with my own eyes. So, concrete. I'd have to discuss that with Mr. Bailey. That's going to be a little bit more money for the asphalt. Anybody else? Uh, I noticed this property that you want to pave and store trailers. It's just south of where all the, uh, shall we say, dilapidated or storage vehicles are. So it kind of fits right in with what's right around there already. Yes. All right, sir. I would agree. All right. Did you have anything else you wanted to say, sir? No, sir. Do, do anybody on the board have any questions? Mayor, one more comment. Alderman Young. So if we approve this and we let you put 77 inches of asphalt or whatever you think it's going to take, <laughs> um, if these trucks, trailers happen to start sinking and we bring you back up here, are you going to install concrete drop pads? Me personally, no, sir. Are, you're here answering the questions for the gentleman. Oh, right. I understand. I mean, I... I can't speak to that. I, I don't know for sure whether or not he would come back and repair that. I mean, it, the intent is for it to be designed properly the first time, so this is not a problem. Uh, if you want concrete, you can do that with that condition, and I can go back and speak to I'm you. not talking about the whole thing. I'm just talking about no, where. I you're talking about where you're parking the trailer. Where you're dropping the trailer. Yes, sir. I understand. Very simple. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Alderman Bledsoe. Are y'all going to be put a fence up front? Yes, to keep it from looking so bad. Yeah, that was the intent with some landscaping so you wouldn't see the fence. Okay, well, I keep jumping too early. <laughs> I want to make, make sure I get my point in. <laughs> <laughs> we got you it, covered. We got you covered. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, this remind the audience this is a rezoning. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak in favor of or opposed to this? Mr. Francis J. Miller, please, sir. Once again, for the record, Francis J. Miller, 14-year voting resident, Ward 5. I agree with Alderman Dupree. I've had heavy equipment. You take asphalt, heat it up, and they're going to sink. You need to put, if you approve it, I'm all for the parking. We need the parking. The trucks need it. <coughs> but you need to put in, when you approve this, those pads or whatever you call those concrete pads, if they unhook that truck and they sit it on that asphalt, it won't be sitting on asphalt. It'll be sitting on concrete and you put that on the front end, you either do it or you don't come. Anyone have any comments or questions for Mr. Miller? Mr. Mayor. Alderman Dupree. Uh, Mr. Francis, this is the first time that you and I have agreed on so many things in one meeting. <laughs> I'm starting to get scared. <laughs> I'm more worried about Alderman Dupree. <laughs> first step in dementia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, anybody else in the audience? I, I'm a, uh, I don't know anything about 18, you know, the big, wheel, uh, big trucks. When you're talking about the pads, you're just talking about a pad in the front. You're not talking about the whole length of the trailer. You're just down where it sits down. Yeah, where the dollies sit down on the... Sir? With the dollies from the trailer. Okay. On the dollies. Is that what you call down. them? Dollies? Yes. All right, thank you, sir. And is there any more discussion on this? All right. Public hearing is now closed. Do we have a motion? Mayor. Alderman Dupree. I'll make the motion with a conditional for the concrete pads. Where, what is this? The uh, case number twenty one seventeen RZ request mm -hmm. rezoning for M uh, C four to M one at sixty six forty one Highway fifty one, consisting of eight point four acres, four eight acres. All right, we we have a motion by Alderman Dupree. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Alderman Young. Do we have any discussion? Mayor. Alderman Dupree. Oh, Alderman Geis, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, 
on the uh, condition, since this is a conditional use, I, I would think it's not the. Uh, this is just a rezoning. Rezoning. It's a rezoning. Well, well that's right. what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. I'm getting confused now by what we're all doing, but since it's just a rezoning, it's not. I wouldn't think it's the appropriate place to make stipulations on the conditional. I think that. And I'll redraw that. You're, you're I'll, exactly I'll, correct. I'll redraw it. So. <laughs> You're exactly correct. So your motion is just to approve the rezoning. Is that correct? Now, we are sure that you are going on this property because we don't want some other business, 86 other businesses come on here. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. My motion stands right. All right. Is his motion second still stands? Still stands. Any more discussion? Roll call, please. Alderman Young. Aye. Alderman Dupree. Aye. Alderman Johnson. Aye. Alderman Bostick. Aye. Aye. Motion carries seven in favor, none opposed. Now for the hard part. All right, Mr. Barr. This next one is a public hearing also. I'll declare it open. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, uh, now that the rezoning request has been approved, this, um, this opens the way for the consideration of the condi conditional use. In this case, it's a request on the same property, same location, same address. Um, to to park semi trucks there as a land use, as a conditional use. And that was also taken up by the Planning Commission back on January the 30th. They did recommend approval of the request with a few conditions uh, uh, mentioned that I, that I will mention. If I can find them here, hold on. <laughs> Yes, what they did, uh, they recommended uh, with the approval that with the four following four conditions, uh, A, the applicant slash owner shall create an emergency action plan or EAP to the satisfaction of the city and the Mississippi Emergency Management Agency, MEMA, because the property is located within the 100-year floodplain. B, owner slash applicant shall submit a site plan design review application for administrative review and approval if no new buildings are proposed. C, applicant slash owner shall install, install security lighting and fencing to the satisfaction of the city. Uh, and D, uh, applicant slash owner shall surface the vehicular use, uh, use sites with permanent pa paving as prescribed in Article 7, uh, Item H of the city zoning ordinance. Um, and they said that phasing is acceptable. That's right now the uh, landowner has proposed phasing in um, the development of the property. Um, so to basically to allocate the costs over a period of time. Um, and then actually part of the conditional use is to um, continue the auto repair shop. Um, that actually in an M1 zone uh, requires a conditional use. The use there is now, uh, is there currently, but out that, out that, uh, that use also allows for outdoor storage of vehicles. Um, that's why it's a conditional use in the M1 zone. Thank you, sir. Yes. Does anyone on the board have any questions? Mr. Mayor. Alderman Dupree. Now is when I put that conditional use in. <laughs> you want to make a motion right now? I'll make the motion with the conditional use of the concrete pads. I'll second that motion, Mayor. I, uh, you, but, uh, but it's also with the staff recommendation. Yeah, yes, the, with the uh, planning right. recommendation. All right. All right. We have a motion by Alderman Dupree. We have a second by Alderman Bostic. Do we have any discussion? Mayor. Yeah. Alderman Geis. Uh, I have a question for the representative of the applicant. Having voted down uh, item B, which was the uh, vehicle parking ordinance on the properties, uh, are those type of vehicles going to be allowed to rent that and park there? So, uh, no, and it, and it was also uh, like wreckers and other things like that. Yeah, so, you know, if they want to park a vehicle there, they could also, yes, sir. Okay. It's basically running a business for anybody that would pay to park there. Sounds good to me. Thank you. That's good. Alderman Bledsoe. Are they going to be from Horn Lake? 
Walking your truck there. Actually, how I got introduced to Mr. Bailey was a local trucker in the community, lives in Horn Lake. Yeah. Uh, his, his name sounds, Mr. Bailey is Hispanic. Uh, we kind of had a language barrier at first. But anyways, I'm getting off track. Uh, the guy, every person I've talked to was a local person. Now, do I know that every person is? I don't, but majority I know are. Okay, because I get that question quite a bit because people like them get tired of the parking and I don't like to see them. You go down here and look at Kroger, they got about 10 of them parked out there. Right, yeah. So anyway, I'm just trying to take care of people Horn Lake. I Thank understand. you. Anybody else have any qu questions? Alvin Young. Hey. <laughs> Mr. Barr, what's the time frame on the paving of the, is it three years or five years or, or have we even gone there yet? We haven't really went there yet. Basically, our, our staff's expectation would be that before we would, um, you know, issue like a business <coughs> business license or something like that, we would need to see the paving in place because um, then it's ready to go, basically, as opposed to like do it later. But obviously, if they want to do that in phases, whether that's three phases, four phases, five phases, we just let that at the discretion of the owner and how, how they want to uh, use the property over a period of time. If I may add, um, I didn't state in the, in the like the, the PowerPoint is that it looks like it has capacity for about 40 to 50 semi trailers, um, tractor trailers, and their tr and the trailers there to be parked there. And then the administrative review, um, that site plan design uh, would, would kick in and require through the zoning ordinance some landscaping in the front of the property and then also fencing on the other sides as well. Um, there's, a, there's a planting formula as far as buffering because now that the zoning is M1, there's actually a buffering requirement between the C4 zoning that's south of the property and C4 that's uh, north of the property and now and up against the, the M1 zoning. So there is some, there's a formula there for plantings there as well and fencing. Uh, Sound like you got your fence there, Alderman. I got your fence, Alderman. <laughs> I didn't need to ask. Yeah, Good. Alderman Bostick. I, I guess if we didn't discuss this, would there be overnight parking there for sleepers also? No, sir. It's not for sleepers. It's just for people to leave their vehicle, return to their homes, come back, get their truck after the weekend, go back to work. Gotcha. Mayor, one other question. Alderman Young. I noticed that in front of the house, I'm going back to the house again, there's quite a bit of property out in front of the house. I don't know how the rest of them feel, but the day cabs and the power units or whatever, I wouldn't even be opposed if y'all parking them there if you paved it. Yes, sir. Because that way it would leave all of that area, the other blue area, for trailers. Mm -hmm. where, the, where the power units and directors and stuff like that would not, they could get in and get out without us disturbing all these. That wouldn't even be a problem with me. I don't, I mean, that's just me personally. I don't know how the rest of them feel, but you may want to look at that or and get with the uh, planning department and see if y'all can work that out and extend that fence on down that way and do whatever you got to do. So, I mean, I, I, I don't think that would be a huge problem because it's going to free up more, more room for more, more guys and ladies to park. So, that's the intent. All right. We had a motion by Alderman Dupree with a second by Alderman Bostic. Is there any more discussion? Alderman Bostic. I just wanted to make sure that you did put the conditional use in there for the concrete pads. Okay. That was my bad ear over here, and I just wanted to make sure. Any more discussion? Mr. Mayor, uh, this is a public hearing, so we probably need to open it up to the audience. Oh, thank you. I, uh, I thought we had. Mr. Miller's already spoken, but I didn't give anybody else. Thank you. Anybody? Well, no, you've shot. Security. <laughs> is there anyone else out here who likes to speak pro or con? All right. Public hearing is now closed. Thank you. Your motion is still good. All right. Motion by Alderman Dupree. Second by Alderman Bostic. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Alderman Klein. Aye. Alderman Bledsoe. Aye. Alderman Dye. Aye. Alderman Bostic. Aye. Alderman Johnson. Aye. Alderman Dupree. Aye. Alderman Young. Aye. Motion carries seven in favor, none opposed. Please tell Mr. Jorge, congratulations. Look forward to get it done. Appreciate you coming tonight, sir. All right. All right. Case number 2123, also a public hearing. It's now open. Mr. Barr, if you would, please, sir.
Thank you for your patience. I have a paper blizzard over here. <laughs> I couldn't imagine. Yes, this case, uh, this 2123 AI was an Alderman, Alderman uh, initiative uh, dating back to December 20th of last year. Um, and it was an effort to add some wording to the city's zoning ordinance to help strengthen or the, the city's ability to get um, in enforcement, better enforcement of the city's signage, specifically signs that were designed originally to be lit either internally or externally. Um, we have, just because of some of the aging, uh, the signs that are out there in the city, uh, we have issues from time to time where they, they flicker, they strobe, they're partially lit, some of the letters are lit, some of them are back lit, front lit, and other parts of the signs are not. And we've been trying to enforce that through uh, just an umbrella sort of thing under, the, under, the, under our sign section, under the maintenance. Uh, but there's nothing there specifically about lighted signs. And so this is an effort um, to strengthen that. So the Planning Commission took this up on January the 30th, 30th as they did these other cases, and they recommended approval. And basically what's proposed is just to add one letter um, to uh, the existing text. It would be a letter G uh, in that portion of the, of the zoning ordinance, and I'll just read it here. Signs originally designed to be lit, both internally and externally, shall be maintained to stay lit. This means signs par partially darkened or unlit, flickering, flashing, or strobing shall be maintained, um, field and produce a constant and steady level of light, both internally and externally. Um, and so the Planning Commission uh, recommended approval of adding that wording. Uh, the only thing that from staff's perspective is that um, I guess if since the city does not require all signs that are put up in the town uh, to be lit, that in the case if someone wanted to just turn it off, you know, and leave it in that state, I guess they would still have the ability to do that. I just would need some clarification or legal counsel on that. Um, and then it does bring in the issue that we have the multi-tenant signs where, you know, you might have four businesses or six businesses, whatever the number is, being advertised on the sign, but one of those specific businesses being advertised is having the issue. So if they decided to just turn it off and leave it off, if that's problematic or not uh, as to the board, where you have, let's say you have, you know, six signs and the one's been acting up and they decide, oh, we're just not going to fix it. Um, and so they just turn it off. And then the other, let's say the remaining five just stay lit. Um, which I don't know if that still gives the impression that, you know, it's not functioning or whatever. But um, so that would be a question that, that would be nice to have some clarification as far as what the board uh, desires there. Thank you, Mr. Barr. Anyone on the board have any questions? Alderman Bledsoe. Uh, the only thing, we voted on it as a lit up board or whatever working. It ought to be that way at the end, too. So they ought to fix it. Anybody else? Mayor. Alderman Geis. Does this include the digital signs, like the reader signs and all that? Because we have several of them flashing and not working anymore. And I would I would like this to include those as well. If we, you know, if it's a sign, it needs to be functioning. Well, the, the wording that proposed is whether it's internally or externally lit. So I would consider like a, a moving sign. Actually, I think the moving signs are actually pro prohibited. They're not supposed to be in town. Like the sign, it, the, the message goes across the board and it's moving. I actually think they're supposed to be prohibited um, unless there was a different time that the city uh, permitted those, I, which I don't know. Um, which then, you know, if the, the, standard, the standard came later and they kept the sign going, it would be basically a, a non-conforming or grandfather type of uh, sign unit. But um, to go back to your original question, you know, like let's say it's, it's, if it's scrolling, let's say it gets to scroll or whatever, let's say part of the, the, the dots, if you will, the lights are out, then that's something that I think that would fall under the new language that we could specifically enforce because it's not fully lit. It's not completely lit as, as designed or intended. Anyone else? I don't know about those signs that have multiple businesses. Who pays for that? Does the 
tenant pay for his little sign on there, or does the landowner, the property owner, pay for the whole billboard? Uh, it's a very good question because we have a few of those multi-tenant signs in town, and some are like partially in right of way, so it's they're like on either state route or city route. Um, they're not exclusively on private property. So the way that code has been approaching the issue is that they just they say it's a multi-tenant sign. You know, the, the business is listed on the sign. They just go right to that business and they just try to go and find the person within that business to get uh, to get traction, if you will, to get compliance. And uh, it, it takes usually a little while to get that done because um, <clears throat> once it's brought to the business's attention, you know, they usually have someone come out, figure out what the problem is. Then if there's, you know, something needs to be fixed on a permanent sense, then they do a work order through their corporate uh, angles. And then the parts come in, they're ordered, the parts come in, and they have to get somebody to fix the sign. And so it, there's usually some lag time there. Um, I think normal, it's, it's been taken two to four months on a lot of those to get those repaired. Um, but yeah, we've had, we've had difficulties um, <laughs> identifying who's actually controlling some of those signs, who owns them or whatever, because they're not always on private property. Thank you, sir. So in other words, if part of the sign is out, is that that's up for them to figure out who's going to fix it? Well, yeah, I mean, lot, lots of times, um, well, I don't know about lots of times, but often it, they'll, they'll just say, well, it's, it's not on our property. It's not our responsibility. So, um, so you know, there's, there's a few instances, even just singular uh, signs, even for like, um, I think there's, there's one on Goodman Road as to an apartment complex. And they had posed the question to the department to improve their signage, change the whole signage or whatever, but it actually was in uh, Mississippi ra uh, right away um, for, for, for Highway uh, 302. So we, were, we had a hard time a actually answering their question because um, the zoning, as far as the signage, as far as the size and height and setbacks, all that stuff, it's depending on the type of zoning. And so the zoning wasn't always apparent of what it is out in the road right away. There's no zoning. So it's, it's difficult to know what to tell them. Thank you, sir. Alderman Bostic. Yeah, Chad, I appreciate you very much working on this. I know that I had a lot of discussion with you on this up and down Goodman Road and felt like it was just a big part of the improvements of what our city needed. I know a lot of them have came in compliance. Uh, I got a picture today with a boom truck down there at Tractor Supply, a guy hanging up there on the sign, uh, dealing with some of these store managers. They, they uh, communicate some things, and I communicate back with you on some things. But the, the property, like a, a shopping center that has six or seven places in it, all six or seven of those places pay their rent to one person be it Joe Poppenheimer, be whoever else owns that that strip mall. It would be, seems like it would be very easy for y'all to know if you go down to the Horn Lake Plaza down here and there's eight businesses, they're all owned by Joe Poppenheimer and his office is in there. It's his sign. It's his business. They pay rent to him. So to go in and address the business that – I could see that going into like a Walmart neighborhood market because there's nothing else there but Walmart neighborhood market. So you would go in and address the manager and hopefully the manager would give the code enforcer the information they needed. If, if not, it's very easy to call Walmart corporate, get the maintenance department and figure out what's going on. Um, so I don't think that's really hard to do. From what uh, Alderman Bledsoe was talking about, you know, we need to go back to the original, what we approved in the very beginning. If we approved them to have a lighted sign and a marquee and a building sign and a striped parking lot and a parking lot you could drive on that ain't bumpy like this gas station down here that's not a gas station. There's only two lights in the canopy up there and it's a convenience store and you drive through that parking lot, it's just like this. and it's got gas pumps, but don't sell gas. You know, so we know the, the guy that's in there hitting the register, he's probably the guy that owns the place. Uh, so, I mean, there's got to be simple ways to, to get it resolved. And it, like I said, if they can't get it fixed, just turn it off. I would rather see something turned off as I would to see one light when there's supposed to be four. Until they can fix the whole thing, 
it just makes it look worse to not have it. It's just to have half of it lit and not have, you know, Meineke down here with the MI not working and then the marquee not working. It's like, just turn them off. It'd be better just to turn them off because it, it, it's getting later in the day now anyway. They really don't need to turn them on if they don't have to because they're not open after dark anyhow. So, uh, But I appreciate everything you did, uh, did towards this, and I hope we can get this approved and get put some teeth into getting the city cleaned up as far as the lighting. Anyone else? But it seemed like it'd be easy to just to say whoever owns the sign. That's it. That's it. And they're responsible for it. Yeah. All right. Alvin Bledsoe. Ted, did you say they own the right of way? In, in some instances, yes, either partially or fully. And they're saying nobody owns the sign? In some, in some instances, they, they'll, 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 they just balk at the question or whatever. They just we might have to do some research because if you put it on MDOT, I guarantee you they'll be out there taking it down. So. Good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, all in guys. On what he was saying, uh, I would think some of the signs may show being in the right of way because they widen Goodman Road, and but someone still owns that sign, and it's not the state of Mississippi or the city of Horn Lake. So whoever owns that business is still responsible for their sign. Is uh, you know I, I would think I'm not a, mm -hmm. I'm not a lawyer, but if I own a business and the road widens, but my sign is still there, uh, I think I, I'm responsible for that sign because if the state was going to come through and the sign didn't belong there, they would have tore it down, uh, I would think. I don't think they would just leave a random sign out there. So uh, having been responsible for code years ago now at the police department, having to deal with that crap, I found out that people will outright lie to you and, and you'll you'll start discovering this and if there is no private sign on public property they they're maintaining it and they're responsible for it uh, and as he mentioned whoever the property owner is I know when I worked at a business <coughs> on Goodman Excuse me. we were responsible for the sign on that multi-sign thing that said the name of the business, we bought it and put it on there. We bought the one that put it on the front of the business and we maintain that. But the functionality of the whole sign was the responsibility of the, the landlord that we rented from. Exactly. So, uh, you know, I know the code stuff is something that you just started and got in your area, but that's, uh, I found out when I went there as a police officer, I got a lot more direct answer on my questions than when the code guys went over there. They just kind of tried to blow them off. So uh, if you need law enforcement to go with you to get a straight answer, call them. It, they, they were often amazed by the fact they would give them a hard time and then they would call me as their supervisor and I showed up and so it, it changed. So... Somebody's responsible for the signs, and it's usually the landlord. Thank you, sir. Any more questions? All right. If we already closed it, I think we got tired. I don't think we did, Mayor. I think it needs to be closed. Anybody else in the audience to speak one way? Mr. Francis J. Miller. My pleasure, I assure you. Clean up these signs all over Horn Lake. I agree with you 100%. Get them cleaned up. Thank you, sir. It's been a, it's been several years, Mr. Francis, but I am so glad that you are now willing to work with the Board of Aldermen and realize the error of your ways on so many occasions. Thanks, <laughs> oh, no. Anyone else speak? Mr. Billy? All right, there being no more discussion, this public hearing is now closed. We have a motion. Mayor. 
Alderman Bostic. Make a motion to approve case number 2123 AI request for a text amendment to Article 6, sign regulations, item and D, sign standards and provisions. Number six, uh, maintenance and repair of the city zoning ordinance regarding lighted signs. We have a motion by Alderman Bostic. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Alderman Bledsoe. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Alderman Young. Aye. Alderman Dupree. Aye. Alderman Johnson. Aye. Alderman Bostic. Aye. Alderman Aye. Alderman Bledsoe. Aye. Alderman Klein. Aye. Motion carries seven in favor, none opposed. Uh, I see nothing under new business. Do we have any citizens that wish to speak? All right. Ms. Carter is the only one left. Did you have something else to say? All right. Well, you can uh -oh. come on up. wanted to come before the board tonight and I'll just take just a couple of minutes um, really more is just kind of a just kind of bring it to your attention kind of plead with you to maybe um, fight for our city for our youth our younger ones um, my husband and I we've been uh, citizens of Horn Lake for 18 years I have three school-age children and my youngest is six years old and he attends Shadow Oaks Elementary School um, we absolutely love the school we love the teachers we love the staff we we love our little school um, but however, I wanted to come today on behalf of the Shadow Oaks Elementary um, community um, because I know the board here does not make the, the executive decisions that the school board and things would make. Um, but I'm here because I feel like this is something that needs to be addressed on behalf of our city. Um, Horn Lake's growing, which means our schools are growing. This year, Shadow Oaks has the largest kindergarten class it has seen in years. Um, with this growth, um, why does our children and our community continue to get left out by our school board? Um, it, is it because of disabilities? Is it because of race? Is it because of location? I think it's all the above and then some. Um, our kids deserve better and I think it begins with us. So I wanted to come before our local board and say that I am um, pleading with y'all to please help us advocate for the school. Um, I reached out to our local school board last November and also in December and I was told by them that it's the PTA's responsibility to help fix this very hazardous playground that's there. Um, the president also told me she would not come and look at our playground after I expressed the conditions of the playground and um, still have gotten nowhere. I requested to go uh, and be put on the agenda for the board and I was just iced. I was never responded back to. Um, very, very, just very concerned about that. So again, like I said, it's growing, it's getting bigger. We have a very big lawsuit on our hands. This uh, playground is old, it is not ADA accessible, it is not safe. Uh, you're supposed to have at least six inches of pea gravel. There's not, there's dirt and roots. I mean, it's, it's terrible, it's rusted, kids are getting hurt every day. Something's gonna happen. The paramedics are gonna be out there soon because somebody's gonna be severely hurt. My child has a disability. I don't like him playing on the playground, but he wants to be like the other kids. But if our school board will not do anything, they're getting ready to do the funding. I wanted just to come before the board to see if there's just anybody that would try to help encourage our school board to please take a look at our school. It has not been updated in 13 plus years. And when we did a, I'm the PTA president, when I asked the teachers, what is one thing that we could do to make this school better or we could try to improve upon, Every single one of them said the playground. I mean, it, it will make you sad. It, it is, it's very, very sad. Even the kids, they'll say there's nothing to do but run at recess. And when they go to the intermediate school, the first thing they scream and yell about is the playground. And little ones learn best through play. And what better way to help mold and grow our future when they're small? The gentleman spoke earlier on the youth council. That is wonderful. And it's so well needed. It melted my heart when he said he overcomes so much. And I just wanted to come before the board. I know y'all have had a long night, but I just wanted to see if there's anybody in our city that could try to help plead and advocate to help better our school. Thank you so much for that impassioned uh, discussion. And I think everybody on this board is really touched by your passion and your concern. Mr. Gerald Wheeler is a new member of the school board. And I think that you will find Mr. Wheeler and all of them really 
most of the, the two I really know are really concerned. They might not be aware uh, of your problem, but try to contact Mr. Gerald Wheeler or, or Ms. Riley. They're on this area. Yes, sir. Ms. Riley's the one who told me she would not come. Yeah. I invited her. Ms. Riley did? I, I invited her back in December. I spoke to Senator McClendon at the tree lighting. He helped me get in touch with Ms. Riley, and she said no. She said she would not come. She said she would not come to look at the playground. She told me that the board, if the board is the one who has the ultimate decision in the money, and that if they didn't have the money for it, it would have to be the PTA. And she would not even come and look at it. And I told her that I had Mr. Gary Booth, the school board sent him out and talked to me and we looked at it. And he said so much of that equipment is unsafe, it really should be removed, but they left it so the kids would still have something to play with. So it's like, let's gamble on them getting hurt because if we take it out, they don't have anything to play with. So they know that that need is there and it's been made, but no, I was, I was denied. That's why I just felt, I've been battling this since back in October, November. That's why I just felt to go ahead and come. If you would need to leave your phone number with Miss Julie. I wrote it on there, yes, sir. Oh, did you? Well, uh, I'll, I'll call Mr. Wheeler tomorrow. Okay, thank you so much. And I, I'm just shocked by Ms. Riley, because usually she's. I was very shocked, too, because I was told she would probably help us more than any, and that she currently she is over our district. Which is another reason why I reached out to her, Dr. Mr. Well, you know, Alderman Johnson is a librarian at the intermediate school. And, and I'm not going to pick a brain here in public, but I'd like to pick it in private for your ideas on what we can do. And at the tree lighting, I also shared some of the pictures of the playground with Ms. Johnson. And I told her that this was something that we were fighting, that we were trying to do everything that we possibly could to see what we could do to improve it. But ultimately, if something were to happen, they're, people aren't going to think about shaming the school board. They're going to think about shaming Horn Lake. And that's why I was like, that's, that's not us. You know, like, it's, it's yes, going to be bigger. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Alderman Johnson has some remarks. Ms. Kirby, thank you so much for being a champion for our children. For Shadow Oaks Elementary, I will certainly look into what Horn Lake Intermediate has done in the past. Because you're right, we have two playgrounds, three playgrounds. And one is ADA, all of them should be ADA accessible, um, as well as get fit equipment. So I'm going to see what we did in order to allocate those funds to get that done. Um, certainly the things that you mentioned before, the reasons why Horn Lake does not have what the other municipalities have, is absolutely correct. There are subjects that are taught in other schools that we don't get here in Horn Lake. So... It's definitely time for us to make a change with all of our children. It's not fair, it's not right, but we certainly want to have the best just like others. So thank you. And thank you all. Thank you, Ms. Carter. Anyone else? Thank you, Ms. Carter. Okay, thank you. And thank you, Alderman Johnson. Uh, Alderman, who? Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait a minute, Ms. Kirby. No, no, I, I just had a question for you. Oh, okay. Would this be something that uh, Supervisor Dennison or Supervisor Carwell needs to know about? They couldn't know about it, but the school board's independent of the board of supervisors. I, I understand that. Yeah. I understand that. But I'm just saying that I didn't know if there's something they could do to help. The more pressure, the better. Right. Mayor. Alderman Bledsoe. Uh, if you uh, call the ADA, and tell them you don't have a safe playground, guess what? They'll send somebody out there, and then they will call somebody, and they will fix it. And that's why I stepped back up. I, I feel like I should be completely honest with the board. I have filed an, um, an official civil right complaint against the DeSoto County School Board. Um, again, I cannot do it based on race. I can't do it based on sex. I can do it based on disability because of my son being disabled and not having a be accessible playground. I went down to Jackson back in January. January, and that's and I went before the executive board of the special needs with the special uh, special needs advisory council, and they told me to take it to a lawsuit. I told them I didn't want that. All I wanted to do was get it fixed for the kids. That's what I wanted done. I didn't want a mess, and so they told they encouraged me to file the the. Uh, well, if you so if I you filed. get a hold of ADA, they don't sit back. 
they pay for the big guns. We do have a case number, but again, it's 180 working calendar calendar working days. So um, another reason why I wanted to bring it before the board because I felt like it was something that needed to be done. Maybe it didn't have to go to the extreme. Mayor, thank you. Who? Uh, Alvin Dupree. He had his up first. Are there either? How many special needs kids would you say that there? So under special needs, they're not in the self-contained class, which means they are right. in that room. There is 11. Okay. Again, we're kindergarten through second grade. Um, but there are numerous other kids that are what is called inclusion, which means they are in the regular classroom and right. then they go out to like a special ed class so much, you know, every day at a certain amount of time. Right. Since you've been in the uh, position you're in, you could talk to these other parents, correct? Yes. Anything over three in a lawsuit is called a class action. That may be another step that you can go. When you say class action, it gets ears. Yes, and I met another mom at a PTA meeting, and she couldn't figure out why, where these sores were coming from on her daughter's leg. She wears braces just like my son's, the, the AFOs, and I showed her the bruising that I showed down to Mr. Rob Chase at the board, which was just pushed to the side, and um, she said, that this is exactly what my daughter looks like. And it was, it was a, a young black lady, and she had no idea that there was even sheet gravel on the playground because it's in the back. So nobody sees the playground unless you purposely go back there. And when she showed me what happens because her daughter has neuropathy, she can't feel those little pebbles and stuff inside her shoe. And so she's wearing sores into her feet because of this. But yet they tell us it's acceptable. And so um, I just feel like we should be done. We, it should just, Twin Lake just deserves better. Our kids deserve better. Thank you, ma'am. Alderman, Alderman Bostic, I, I was just curious. Did Miss Riley know about your lawsuit before you called her, or was this something you did after she did not return your call or, or, or tell you she wasn't going to come down here? After I talked to her in January, I talked to her um, the week before Christmas break. And, uh, yes, because it was the week after we had the tree lighting. And after that didn't happen, thought about it over the holiday and prayed about it. Lord, what should I do? These kids need something. Somebody's got to stand up for them. And that's when I uh, found out about the special needs, um, the advocacy board down in Jackson. That was at MDRS. And what did Mr. Chase say to you? Um, I asked during Thanksgiving, right the, the Thursday or fr Friday before Thanksgiving break, I asked to be put on the agenda. Well, they messaged me back, sent me an email, and asked me to meet with Miss Elisa Goss, who's over the special education department, and to meet with Mr. Rob Chase. And so we went down there and we met. I took some pictures, explained my, uh, my concerns, which I had a few others related to my son's IEP. But the whole thing with the playground got brushed off, and I was told, well, we try to have at least one ADA-accessible playground in every zone. And that was it. There was nothing else brought up he didn't make any suggestions he didn't other than the pta raising the money and i told him we are in where we live in horn lake we're not going to be able to raise those types of funds by the time your pta moves on to another school it's only three year school by the time you start getting a good pta flowing if you don't get good hands to pass it off to i told him those funds are never going to be raised it's going to be 250 plus I, I agree i was on the playground committee at horn lake elementary school 25 years ago and that playground got put up over there and it was a lot of fun raising and back then it was grades K through five you know we didn't have the intermediate and all that in between so you were able to get a PTA and I understand where you're coming from on that but it just it upsets me that our school board doesn't take this that you had to go to this you know to this extent to, to, to get their attention very heartbreaking because some of the things you guys talk about with the mayor the the you know it's a it's just a huge inequality in our area I just feel like I feel like we get overshadowed a lot um, I think a lot of people forget that well, Shadow Oaks exists just because of our name it doesn't have Horn Lake or Lake Cormorant or Olive Branch or something attached to it I think a lot of people kind of forget that as well and don't get me wrong, the staff and everybody is amazing. They are absolutely amazing, and they can only do what they're told to do, right. um, which is why, you know, we reached out to the school board. But I just I just could not know that I did not do my fullest in trying to do something because I'm up at Baptist DeSoto, and if I see one of these kids come in with a broken arm or something, I will feel extremely guilty knowing I did not do everything I could to try to better it for them. 
Well, we certainly thank you for everything you're doing and for bringing it to our attention. Thank you very, very much, ma'am. Thank you. Alderman, wait, hold on a minute, please. Wait, Alderman Johnson. Oh, you're fine. Just one other thing. Yeah. Media coverage speaks volumes. And that's another thing. I've reached out to them, and they have ghosted me as well, which breaks my heart because these are our future. These are our kids. I mean, these are the little ones. These are the ones that should not have to be begging and pleading to get some help for a playground. I mean, these are the ones that deserve it the most. You're certainly right. You're certainly right, ma'am. Anyone else have any questions or comments for Ms. Kirby? Alderman Dupree. I think somebody noticed somebody at the DeSoto Times sitting next to me. Uh, yes, there was already an article posted in the paper. Yeah, we, we've, the Soda Times put two articles out, but I think the mainstream media up in Memphis needs to tag on to this pretty quick. Anyone else? Thank you so much for what you're doing, and thank you for spending so much time up late tonight to inform us of it. Oh, they're worth it. Thank you Thank you, so you ma'am. Okay. Uh, Mayor Alderman correspondent. I see that came out, and we can put this on the next agenda if y'all want to, mm -hmm. about they want to put up no parking signs on Wallace Lane. Yeah. Did y'all see this? It's got uh, in the new agenda that's part put back there. Yeah, Mayor. Sir. Where's Wallace Lane? The only Wallace it's Lane on I know It's on the east side. It's on the, on the west side of the railroad track going south. Oh, that was. I know where the Mercedes place. Well, I was thinking the one down off yes, the sir. road. Yes, sir. There. Who who's, who said that? A ghost. Oh, uh, Alderman Bledsoe. Uh, you know, back when we was trying to get parking signs all over the city, and we were told the, the chief and the police had to uh, go through there and say it's warranted that they couldn't get through there. Would that be the only reason? No, uh, no, I remember that conversation. Certainly the uh, police chief does have the, that authority, but ultimately uh, there's a state statute that this is. The mayor and board exercise full jurisdiction over their streets. So if this board, you know, passes an order to put no parking signs up on a street, that shall be done. Thank you. Did the board wish to consider this tonight? All in Boston. I always had a quick question for Chad. This was a recommendation by the code enforcers to put a no parking sign up on Wallace Lane, correct? No, this 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 letter came from Public Works. They said they had a request from code and travelers put no parking street signs on Wallace Lane. Stephen might have something to say sure. about that, and the chief may have something to say about that, well, and Chad may have something to say about that. So, yeah. Well, there was discussion um, by one of the code enforcement people that that was their desire, and we instructed them if that was their desire, not the desire of the department or that division of the department, that they should pursue that as a citizen. I got you. Okay, that's, that's why it said code enforcement on it. Yeah. Okay, that's why I was trying to clear up. And it's got public works on there. Yeah, we, we were contacted by code enforcement and and by the the company Travelers, the the busing company up the street there, uh, that they were having trouble getting those buses down that. It's a narrow road anyway, but getting those buses down that road with the the uh, uh, the place, the Mercedes building place up there that works on those cars. I guess had some cars parked out up there on the on the road. So they're having trouble getting in and out, coming down through there, and they would they they requested that uh, no parking signs. They could have no parking signs put down that street. When I saw Traveler's Agent, I thought that was our insurance. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I tell you what, maybe we can work this out without having to jump through hoops. Just go tell Mr. Bynum, you know, that has the Mercedes place. Say you need to get them off of there, or the board's probably going to put no parking signs all up and down there. Yeah, I don't know if code has done any of that yet. I mean, uh, that would have you, Mr. Barr. I, I know that's really not a fair question because you've been out so that long. I, I don't know. I can't comment on uh -huh. that. Mayor, right here. Alderman Geis. 
If they're parked in the street, blocking the road, that's a law enforcement function, not a code. Okay. Mayor. Over this way. Oh, Oliver Bledsoe. Uh, years ago, back if you remember when we tore up the, the drive over the top, we had this same problem, but it never, they quit parking there for a long time. And then all of a sudden, kind of like they say, they come back. So they used to not park there like that because when we, when Penny Shields was here and they tore up over the railroad tracks, you know, it used to be an right. exit there. Well, we, we, we did that to get the, 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 the lights and everything right. on the old road. All that, but anyway, those people can't get up and down through there. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a good idea. Well, if the board wants to uh, make a motion tonight. I make a motion, Mayor, to put uh, no parking signs up and down uh, Wallace Road or Drive. Right. We have a motion by Alderman Bledsoe. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Alderman Young. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Mayor, my only question would be, is that for the entirety of Wallace Lane? Is that for the entire key? Yes. All right. Second still good? Yes, sir. Alderman Young? Aye. Alderman Dickery? Aye. Alderman Johnson? Aye. Alderman Boxer? Aye. Alderman Dyes? Aye. Alderman Bledsoe? Aye. Alderman Young? Aye. Motion carries seven in favor, none opposed. Mr. Mayor, I know we've got a probably not any action to be taken, but just in case we're approaching 930, if we could entertain a motion to extend. All right, do we have a motion to extend? I'll make that motion. Motion by Alderman Boston. I believe so, was there any second? Second. Second by Alderman Young. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Thank you, sir. Alderman Klein. Aye. Alderman Bledsoe. Aye. Alderman Dice. Aye. Alderman Boxer. Aye. Alderman Johnson. Aye. Aye. Motion carries seven in favor, none opposed. All right, uh, Mayor Alderman Correspondence. I, I didn't have this plan until the discussion tonight when it seemed pretty obvious that a majority of the board wanted to instruct the code enforcement that one warning ticket on tractor trailers, second time they get a ticket. I, I don't think we need to leave Mr. Chad hanging, we either want them to do it or we don't want them to do it. Mr. Mayor. And, I, and Mr. Billy, would it be appropriate to have a motion on that? No, Mayor, I don't think you need a motion on it, uh, but just some consensus from the board on what direction they want to go. Alderman Dupree. Yes, sir. Um, I would like to see more than just, just tractor trailers. I can go by the same house after they've been there and it's nothing's happened to them. There's a car, red car sitting in the same mud hole every day. When they go by, it's not there. It's there at nighttime. Something's gotta be done about that. Houses that are falling down, I know that we got this new uh, uh, flight thing going. Rent, rental housing licensing Thank you. act. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, but there are, there are certain things that is repetitive. Same houses, same areas every time. I can name five off the top of my head right now that is over and over and over and over. When is enough enough? I, I think Alderman Young just experienced that in the, with one of his repeaters in the courtroom. That's good. At least they got paperwork in their hands saying hey you're going to go to court now this is what's got to happen and we've all had experiences with that where they will go in and, and clean up because the court told them to and then they turn right back around and do the same thing again Alderman Young had a house in his district I think that's the problem you're talking about in it Alderman Dupree yes and you're spending time and resources and the and the people you don't have, just going back over and over and over. Does One, anyone else want to come in on that problem? Alderman Bostic. No, I agree 100%. I, I've been with this for 25 years, long before 
I even thought about sitting in one of these chairs. I came before this board many a time. You know, when you go out and, and you ticket somebody and then 10 days later you're doing them for the same thing again, it's a big deal. Like I said, I think it needs to be on everything, not just the trucks. We have a problem with the trucks, but there's 20 yards in the neighborhood that, that get ticket. The only time they cut their yard is when they get a ticket. They don't go to, go, go to court, they come to court, they show a picture to the judge, and, oh, it's cut, and they're like, okay, pay your court, fine, go, and then 10 days later, they're doing it again. And that's where it goes back to the, uh, maybe our judge could get a little tougher. Because we have no authority in the courtroom. Well, courtroom is that. I, and they, they, they let them, I know exactly what you're talking about. No, sir, we Believe don't. Me. We, I'm Believe me. Believe me. We, we don't have control over the court, but we have control over who is our judge. Well, before we get off into the weeds here, <laughs> that's a topic for another meeting. <laughs> I, I know. I, <laughs> well, give me a machete and let me get out. You know. All right. Do y'all, is that the consensus of the board that they ask Mr. Barr to consider one warning and then the next time they get a ticket? Is that the yes. consensus of the board? Yes. Well, good. We can move on. I just want to, uh, well, again, thank Mr. Francis for the flowers. And that's about all I have. Alderman Young, you have something for the, the board meeting? Yes, sir. Alderman Dupree? No, sir. I've said enough. Alderman Johnson? No, sir. Alderman Bostic? Yes, sir. <laughs> Alderman Geis? No, sir. Alderman Bledsoe? No, sir. Alderman Klein? No, sir. Ah, Mayor, do you have anything for the board? No, sir. Anyone have questions for the Major? Mr. Stephen, do you have anything for the board? Not tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Anyone have questions, Mr. Box? Chief Limbo, do you have anything for the board, sir? I do not. I'm good. Anybody have questions, comments for the Chief? Mr. Drew, do you have anything for the board? Oh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, board. I don't have anything tonight. Anybody have questions, comments for Mr. Drew? Park's looking good. Mr. Malavasi, do you have anything for the board? Anyone have any questions for Mr. Malavasi? Mr. Barr, do you have anything else, sir? I'm sorry, but I do. Uh, <laughs> so, um, Get to rope. <laughs> so... I just want to remind the community that uh, we're having the planning uh, comprehensive plan update kickoff meeting uh, over here at the First Baptist Church of Horn Lake, it's like, uh, 3505 Goodman Road West. And that'll be held on uh, Tuesday, February the 28th at 6 p.m. And people are welcome to come and uh, uh, hear what the consultant can say and express ideas. Um, there'll be some stakeholder meetings uh, next week as well. The planning consultant, which is Orion Planning and Design Group, will be in town uh, Thursday, excuse me, Tuesday and Wednesday next week. And then there's the planning rush week uh, has been slated for the week of July the 10th through the 14th, where there'll be additional meetings for to solicit uh, community input on various planning topics. So, so please come out to that meeting, um, and uh, that'd be a good thing. So. Thank you for having so, I never thought I would say this, but thank you for having so many meetings because it gives all of our citizens ample opportunity to come in here and express to this board how they want Horn Lake to be for the next 20 years. So I urge every one of our citizens to please attend. If you can't attend, contact your alderman to give them your suggestions. Mr. Jim, do you have anything, sir? I'm glad uh, Mr. Barr took the heat and <laughs> everybody kept saying no. Um, oh, Jim. <laughs> um, I, I just want to uh, share a few things. We had a meeting today with the architects uh, for the uh, city hall renovation. Uh, it's been like our second or third meeting. Um, it's real exciting uh, to see, and hopefully uh, next meeting we'll have some uh, board display boards put together where you'll kind of see uh, appreciate uh, Major Lamphere and and the others that are involved in the uh, uh, the committee looking at that and some of the changes we're looking at so it uh, be excited to get that going that'll come before uh, you all here shortly uh, as they 
uh, put some of the numbers together uh, to let us know what the, the actual costs are, are going to be, but it's, it, it is gonna change up uh, the look uh, drastically of City Hall and, and much needed. So excited to, to talk about that and not to really say this is like a state of a union uh, for the, the city, but the financial state of the union. Uh, we did get uh, the uh, large ad valorem check in today, which was over 4.6 million. Um, and I put at your seats, uh, I did get that uh, inputted into the system and um, you'll see I highlighted the ad valorem uh, for the year, we're at 5.178 million. Um, so a little over 5 million there, you'll see that's at 66%. Um, and considering you know, we're not even at 40% uh, of the way um, uh, into the, the budget year, we're coming up on uh, closing out the fifth month, um, so uh, it, uh, that is good that that revenue, and you'll see a, a total revenue uh, for uh, all the different categories is at 46%. So we're running ahead of where we need to be. Um, and, and that's good to have your revenue above your expenses. We don't have any department um, that is, uh, the only department that is the highest is animal control. They're at 42%. Everybody else is 41, all the way down to uh, street department as the lowest. Uh, they have spent 25% of their budget. Um, yeah. So that's only one quarter of the budget and we're almost halfway uh, through the year. So departments are doing a great job. Um, and, and with that being said, we, um, uh, our debt uh, service is fully funded. Uh, I, I did not put that sheet uh, on there, but as we get in ad valorem, some of that is allocated to debt service. Um, our debt service uh, payments uh, for the whole year are 1.8 million, uh, and we already have 1.4 uh, million in there uh, to accommodate that. So we're at 78% uh, you know, paying off our debt service for the year obligation. So um, State of the Union is, is great. Um, you know, you, you got your um, uh, bank statement in there also, you know, taking into all of our uh, accounts, we have over $25 million in the bank. Um, you will notice, and I thought Vince might say more about the, um, the street uh, maintenance program that's getting ready to kick off. Uh, he sent out some uh, streets kind of in phases that we're looking at. Um, you look back at your bank statement, we have 3.4 million in that uh, modernization usage tax. That's what we are setting aside for the roads. Um, and that's just with the one payment that comes in in January and July. Well, July of last year, we got 725,000 in, so we'll get that or more. Uh, so we will be sitting at over 4 million in there, uh, ready to go. Uh, and this first phase is only uh, about 3.2 million, I believe, is what Vince has. So uh, we're set for the roads this year and, and then some. Uh, so the State of the Union is, is great. Thank you, Mr. Jim. Thank you, and all your department heads, thank you all too. Alderman Geist. Have, I have one question. Uh, do you have a status on the animal shelter land? Uh, yes, and Billy can speak to this. We uh, had been back and forth with their attorney. They gave us uh, a proposal. Uh, Billy uh, and I had uh, sent back, or Billy sent back some of the markups that we did, just correcting a few things, adding some things that uh, would better clarify uh, where we stand, and they're presenting that. Uh, Billy told me tonight that um, they didn't have any other issues. That was going before the school board, uh, their next meeting, I believe. Yeah, ho hopefully so. I, I did correspond with the school board attorney last Tuesday. Um, he had sent me a draft of their formal resolution donating the property, and I'd made some comments on it, and he had sent that back to the school board last week, and I have not heard anything since last Tuesday on it. But I told Jim I'd follow up with him tomorrow. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for the great job you do and all your department heads. If there is no other discussion, there is nothing else on the agenda. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Somebody. Mayor. Mike. I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Uh, who made the motion? All, motion by Alderman Geis. Who made the second? Dupree. Alderman Dupree. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Aye. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, we are adjourned. Be careful going home.